Imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try. No hell. Below us. Above us only sky. Is that good? Imagine all the people living for today. You who are gay. Imagine there's no countries. It isn't hard to do. Nothing to kill or die for. No atheism to Imagine a world with no politicians Epstein's black book would be mighty empty Living life in peace You may say that I'm autistic, but you'd probably be right. I hope someday you'll join us, and the world will be as one. Imagine no possessions, I wonder if you can. No need for greed or hunger. God fucking damn it, eat the rich. John Lennon is one of the fucking worst artists to ever live. You guys know he used to beat his wife. Imagine a world where John Lennon got shot before he wrote this stupid fucking song. God, I fucking hate this song. It's shit and stupid and it's gay and I hate it. Imagine all the people living life in peace. You. You may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you can join us and the world can live as one. Fuck. All right, let's start the show. Thought Cops, the only podcast where every week we police the mean streets of the internet because, hey, somebody's got to do it. Oh! And then we let you be the judge, the jury, and the executioner in the court of public opinion coming to you live from Neo Chicago. I am Officer Kevin. And I'm the Joker, baby. <laughs> We really do live in a society, don't we, Grant? Uh, I'm cracking, man. Man, I, you've gone dark on Twitter, I noticed. I'm cracking. Yeah, the story behind that, you showed me this, so I'm going to blame you for it. But the last tweet that I've sent out is I retweeted George Takei saying, Breaking, due to massive incompetence and inexplicable delay, the World Health Organization to rename COVID-19 to Kofifi 45, it cracked me. I'm done. I can't... I can't live in this world anymore. Push you over the edge. That's too much. Push me over the edge. (laughs) Truly one of the worst posts of all time. Uh, Grant, you're not alone in these (laughs) trying... You're not alone in these trying times. All right, man. We are all with you. We all all hated it. it. Nobody liked it. Everybody's sad. Everybody's in pain. I know, but I don't know that because I'm socially distant from everybody else. You have to. (laughs) I'm so sad. That's the order, man. That's an order. So this is our first uh, post-pandemic episode. Uh, before we get into that, let's give a quick right thank you. in the middle you. of it. Yeah, give a quick thank you to our guest from last week. I feel like this is a whole other world back then. We had uh, 
Ben Flores was it on the really, show. It really is. Limited breadsticks on Twitter. Thank there, you, Ben. There was pre-limited breadsticks era, and now it's post-limited breadsticks era. Yeah. That's how the show feels right now. Everything's really. different. But you know what? I digress. Because we got not one, Grant, but two guests on the show today. How? Oh! We got a returning champion and a brand new member of the family. How exciting is this? Um, this is the most excited I've been the past, I don't know, three weeks. And I've only been jobless for two days. Oh my God, dude. <laughs> it's the most interaction I've had with other humans in quite some time. Yeah. We're living in the Death Stranding, folks. But that being said, we got Garrett Hunter and Brian Abu Chakra from Omega 64. What's up, boys? How the hell are you? Yo, what up, man? How you guys doing? Hi, people. So I I wanted to try to count down, and Brian, we could say hello uh, together. Ready? Okay. Three, two, one. Hello. Hello. That was incredible. Perfect timing, impeccable, and uh, we expect nothing less from the uh, from the crew at the PPS. That's the poorly played stream on Mega sixty four. Uh, I was just on the program recently. Me and yeah. uh, me and Nico were on the show. Different Nico. Different Nico. But uh, N- uh, California Nico, we could say. We Too were many on- Nicos on this show. We got to start killing them off. Well, let's not do that. <laughs> I mean, in Minecraft. In, uh, in Minecraft. In yeah, yeah. Minecraft. We can call her Corona. So Chan. it was a great time. Yeah, Corona. Yeah, Corona. <laughs> She played the uh, she played the part of Corona Chan. This was again. Uh, this was sort of pre pandemic. We were having a little laugh. Yeah, we were having fun. I didn't expect that bit to just become the theme of the show, but I was really dominating uh, every stream I've done in the last week. It seems to be the topic at hand. I mean, every post on Twitter, every everything is just all based around this one singularity right now it's fucking crazy hey we're moving towards it yeah i can't wait so, for I those mean, those facebook images of like all the words you used in 2016 and it's like real big font you're gonna see corona and covid19 it's gonna say like love and breasts really small like around the sides and, oh yeah we I don't mean, even have time to think about that kind of bullshit that's the <laughs> problem no, no we're, we're we're living in a in a covid world we are uh we're we're about to be in a post-covid world soon once uh once this is all settled but this is like uh this is like a 9-11 type event man the whole world has changed yeah. because of this thing like we're no joke in. no joke i mean like the rumor is i don't know how true this is and maybe we could eat these words next week i hope but they're saying 18 months. I don't know if that's true. That's insane. No way. Yeah, that's it's weird that you bring up 9-11 because I remember like, you know, I was in fifth grade when 9-11 happened. But the thing that I remember the most was like, how do we get everything up and operating as quickly as possible? How do we get people back on airplanes? How do we open up New York City again? Like, what can we do to make this go by faster? Now it's literally just, I don't know, sit and wait and fucking right. Do nothing. Do absolutely nothing for what? 18 months? I'm going fucking nuts. It, we, this is we two don't days know yet. in. We don't know yet. That's that's really yeah. all it is. Before we kind of had an idea because there was at least a response system in place. But I mean, yeah. to, say, to say the least, there obviously has not been a response system in place. So here we are in uncertainty, but that's what the thought cops are here for, right? More or less. That's oh, you God, guys. Don't put that responsibility <laughs> on my shoulders. No, you guys, we got to b- hunker down and realize as podcasters and content creators, <laughs> we're the new media rock stars out there, guys. Damn we are, right. We're providing content for trying people in trying times. We're building communities where people can't go outside. Listen, this is just like in Death Stranding. People are connected together <laughs> through the Thought Cops Network, through this Discord. And I'm, and, and True, yeah. you know, through all of the things that you guys put out, this the family's still there. We just, you know, the bonds are are, are stronger now through through the internet, through media. Whoop whoop! The family is still there. <laughs> Podcast to the people. Podcast oh, to the, the people. people. Podcast to, to the, the people. people. I love it because laughter is the only medicine that seems to do anything right now. Speaking of laughter, we had a lot of laughs and a lot of good times on the Mega 64 PPS last week. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. Uh, YouTube. Please do. Please look up the, do. Uh, yeah, you need something to do, I'm sure. So go look up the YouTube uh, Mega 64 Archives channel, the PPS, uh, the 
I don't know what number it is, but it's called Thought Cop Fallen Order. Yeah, it's three. Check it out. I think it's 352. And uh, just about every asset from the Thought Cops universe made an appearance that night. I mean, Bernie called in. We talked, oh, right. Yeah. We talked to Grant, both Nikos. I mean, it, Zwick, uh, his call alone just really made my whole week. Was Zwick or uh, also known as John Jine? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And not only we, we didn't get just a call from Zwick, but we got a call from uh, Heather, uh, yes. Zwick's mother. Oh, and, it was a great uh, call. it explained a lot. Yeah. I feel like they, they talk the same. <laughs> Do they? Yeah, very, very similar affect. Uh, they got w- that same uh, s- uh, fire in their belly. Good. You got to get that fire out. What, what are some of the things that you noticed that, are, that were very, like, stood out to you similar about Zwick and, uh, and Heather's way of speaking? It was just like, uh, I, I, it's hard to explain. It was just like subtle. I don't know if you picked up on this, Grant, but just the, Not ma- too m- the I think mannerisms just the like, uh, like fucking hell, like stuff like that. Like little <laughs> cadence. Yeah, okay, I can cadence, see it. Yeah, yeah, the cadence. I mean, I was more focused on the bombasticism of like the content that she was spewing, which was the greatest content I think I've ever like witnessed in my life. Like... I was not paying attention to how she was saying it. I was 100% tuned into what she was saying. Yeah, so I would say go check out that stream. Uh, The entire thing was wall to wall. Uh, Just a crazy time. Good time. Laughs had by all. Yeah, I'm glad you came by. Uh, Always happy to have you in San Diego, Kevin. Absolutely, man. Yeah, always a pleasure to come by the studio. Hell yeah. And uh, let's move on here to, you know, Garrett, like you're saying... It's up to us to bring a uh, bring a little bit of strength to the world. The content creators. They're, we're really the new first responders. I'll go yeah. back. Hey, hey, emotional yeah. first responders. You know, we're there. We're helping people out. And by that, we, of course, mean uh, playing video games on Twitch.tv. <laughs> Grant, we've been streaming. We're up in we're upping the Thought Cop stream quite a bit in these uh, in these trying times. It's probably going to be like once a day, every At day. Least, for the yeah. next. I mean, we're both getting on there. We're doing our own different things. Uh, Grant, you've been doing the Bernie stream. Of course, yeah. uh, our grandfather, <laughs> Bernie Sanders, called into the PPS the other day. It was incredible. Yeah, <laughs> and he's been using our uh, Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash thought cops to stream all sorts of video games and answer any any questions about the 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 elect uh, the election that's going on right he now. He was going a little off the hinges. Uh, the last one, I, I don't think he, his uh, I don't think he's doing too well in this primary. So yeah, he was, uh, cursing up a storm. But. Yeah, I, I was watching that. He's playing Mario Odyssey and kind of getting angry. <laughs> wow, Bernie swears. <laughs> oh, yeah, he oh, yeah. swears. He's got a he's oh, got he a mouth like a sailor. You, gotta, you should you should see this stream. It's something else. Yeah. Um, and I have been streaming Super Mario Maker. Uh, me and uh, Chicago Nico, uh, Goth Nico, whatever she wants to be called. We need uh, new writers for this show. <laughs> <laughs> the queen of the voicemails, Nico. Nico uh, we Chicago. Streaming, yes, we were streaming some uh, Super Mario Maker. People were sending in their levels to us through level codes and if you're listening to this and you have any levels you want us to play on stream we'll do it it was a really fucking fun time we were going for like three or four hours and we had a bunch of levels from people and we just were the whole thing's archived we got it uh well maybe i think it's just clips at this point but we're gonna be doing more of them yeah and just playing through all kinds of crazy shit uh i know like serial law obeyer made a really good level sent us to it or sent it to us on twitter uh-huh. uh donald jewel trump or josh our yeah. friend sent in uh a few really hard levels we had a lot of good stuff come through io netrunner had a really good one uh couldn't beat it got really close kept dying turned it off took a break came back on it was a great time though uh so yeah i would say definitely uh, make sure to uh, subscribe to us on twitch twitch.tv slash thought cops because the hell what else, else are do? you yeah. doing yeah what and the what fuck? else are we doing i guess you no, know absolutely nothing so we're gonna be doing a lot more stuff on there so uh stay tuned and uh you know what got another segment i want to touch on this week okay it's been a while since we've had any beef oh so this week's beef before potatoes oh Goes to Disneyland. Ow! Yeah. So after the day after the PPS, my girlfriend and I took a little trip to Disneyland. And uh, <laughs> you're gay. <laughs> that's, that's right. You, you went during a pandemic. <laughs> 
Let me just say this. Irresponsible. We, she's in the chat and she said he is. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Y'all, y'all, come on. Fellas, is it gay to have a girlfriend? <laughs> in the best way the possible. <laughs> so, you know, I, I, we, you know, we take these fun photos for every episode we do. If we have a guest or we meet up with somebody, we always take these goofy photos. We've sort of, uh, we've sort of commandeered the, the new squirt gun emoji as the, yeah. the uh, de facto thought cops icon. Hell yeah. And we have a whole bunch of these little green squirt guns around the apartment. So we always take pictures, holding them, doing funny poses. And I went to go to the PPS. Uh, Garrett, Brian and I took a fun picture with the squirt guns and I right. put them back in my backpack and I forgot they were in there. And I was at the check-in Uh-oh. to oh, Disneyland. I know where this is going. Yeah. And oh, they, no. they were, they were digging through my bag and they're like, what are these? And I'm like, Oh, those are those are props for uh, a, a video. Squirt guns. Yeah, they're squirt guns. And then she's like, "You got to throw these away." Oh, no, like, all really? three. Yep. yep. So I know those you, were like ten dollars on Amazon. Nah, they were like Shit. ten bucks for the whole thing, right? Yeah. Whatever. We'll get, we got some more left here. Uh, it's a shame that you know they took our guns. <laughs> I can't believe <laughs> See, it. You come out to California, and we're taking your guns. I don't know why we sound hackney. But. We're prying it <laughs> from your cold, dead hand. <laughs> that green gun is not allowed in yeah, the Magic dude, Kingdom. Keep your guns out of California, man. We're going to come and take your guns. We're going to put them in the garbage and ask for restitution, <laughs> man. Right in the trash. <laughs> Knowing Disney, they probably they probably bought the rights to them and made a fucking Disney Plus with them. Damn it. Disney Plus show. They so, probably did. So you lost out on that. Yeah, that's going to be sad to see the Doc Cop show come up without us, but that's fine. You know, I We should, still have more guns here. I should have known better than bring guns into Disneyland. Wait, yeah, you should have known oh, better. Well. Don't they own the Emoji movie? Is that them? No, that's that uh, was DreamWorks. Sony, I believe. Oh, okay. Cuz I would I, No, I th- I think it's I think it's Sony because when the Sony email hack happened, I believe there was a lot of uh information surrounding that movie in particular and foreign audiences, if I recall correctly. I think you're right. But, Either way. Don't you wish that you knew less about all of this stuff? Oh, my God. Yeah, yes. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I sh- the correct answer would be, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm an adult. Yeah. There's an emoji movie. Yeah. Instead, I know like 20 facts about <laughs> the emoji movie and I've seen it. The movie itself or about like. You know, more the back end deals in the Sony uh, marketing channels. <laughs> both. 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 See. That, that's a good thing, though. Uh, I don't know. It's out for a debate. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a side effect of doing this kind of podcast. But that's fine. You know, we have fun. But that being said, uh, beef before potatoes goes to Disneyland. Listen, I get it, but come on. Yeah, man, come they're on. toys. What do they think? I filled it up with coronavirus and was going <laughs> to shoot them in the fucking Imagineers' mouths? Yeah, I don't know. So let's move right along, <laughs> shall we? I'm ready. Sure. So our very favorite, very famous segment of the show called Two Minutes of Hate, where we like to blanket punish these things that we see on Twitter.com, on Facebook.com, on Instagram.com, all sorts of these websites that we're addicted to. We peruse on the regular, especially now more than ever. We're just really nothing but misery. It's all that bad being news. Said, I, I'm going to shit on something positive I've seen this week. Okay. Go for it. I don't, this is the time to do it. I don't give a fuck about your quarantine routine. Have you guys seen these on Twitter? People are typing out in the notes app their quarantine routine like 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. I get up and oh, I do God. yoga and I praise the sun. 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Oh. I, make a, I make a bagel with <laughs> avocado. Is it the vanity of it or is it like the impracticality of what the you know like what's the purpose is that what's the root of of your hate i would say on the surface i would say that i see it as posturing below that i see it as uh you also think that shorts in the winter is posturing where it's an effective (laughs) way of keeping the covid19 virus away from you is that right yeah I could kind of see well, it as a need- baby on board type of thing. Like, I, I just like the baby on board signs because it's like, what, do I, what am I going to change the way I drive because you got a kid in the car? Like, come on, drive better yourself. Yeah. It's I mean, a posturing. It's like I, humble brag. Right. I would say, you know, not to get, not to wrap too much on the shorts, but, uh, you know, we're here. We're talking <laughs> about it. <laughs> 
<laughs> Grant, if this is true, you need to you need to tell the government. I've been telling everybody that listens to this show, and nobody believes me that this is the cure for it. I don't. I don't. Do I have coronavirus right now? There's only mm. one way to find out. Start wearing pants, and if you get sick, we'll know. I'm not going to do that. I'm All not right. putting my life at risk. Yeah, we need a control. Put some pants exactly. on, and we'll find out. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll see. So but I I know what you're talking about. I I feel like everyone thinks that like yeah, in a sense that it's like well here's here's what I'm doing. Like let me display this to you, and it's just like what makes you think that you're that interesting. That we're going to, like, follow you and listen to you and, like, take in all this information of, like, I don't give a shit that you're doing yoga at 7 a.m. Like, why would I care that you're doing that? Also, like, it took a it took a pandemic to get you to do yoga. Was That's perenni- why I wanted to take me to do yoga. Was perennial sunbathing at 7.30 a.m.? <laughs> like, when the sun's high? That's... Yeah, yeah, that's uh, part yeah, of it, yeah. That, I believe so. Or, or is it at lunch? High noon? I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe that's a, a lunchtime yeah. activity, yeah. yeah. That's when Spre- it's straight up. Eat, eat some, uh, eat some, uh, take something with a lot of fiber. Yeah. Uh, spread the hold of the sun. That's what that song Black Hole Sun was about. Perennial sunbathing. <laughs> huh. What a pioneer. Yeah. Rest in peace. Yeah, if you post your quarantine routine, um, I guess, uh, yeah, good for you. You're all, your life is organized and I'm not. Uh, poo-poo on me. This is, a, the, the thing about this is, you know, uh, I would say the silver lining that I see to this pandemic going on is this is the time where... You can be miserable and complain about shit, and it's totally acceptable because everybody's doing it. I am. And then these people are ruining it. They're going out, they're talking about their, you know, their plan for the day, and I want to be like, hey, did you hear this is supposed to go on for 18 months? You're going to be doing yoga at 7 in the yeah. morning. <laughs> yeah, bull fucking shit. Yeah, so... Uh, Everyone steps this... out looking like fucking models in the, you know, fall. It's going to be sweet. Yeah, I don't think... I think that people are front-loading too much, like... I'm doing the opposite of that. I'm having my, like, horrific mental breakdown right now. And then in, like, a month or so, I'll be good. I'll be, like, working out every day, all that. But, like, if you're doing all of that stuff now, like, you're going to burn out immediately. You can't do yoga right now. I agree. Grant, Grant, as a self-described gym cell, how are you handling the closing of the gyms? I've been drunk 24-7. I'm (laughs) jobless right now. I have nothing to do. What's your, uh, what you been drinking? Um, I got some old styles. Uh, I got some bourbon. Nice. That's it. When I was unemployed for like nine months, I definitely drank all the time. Been there, man. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, what else do I have to do right now? Play video I feel games. like I'm just saying that. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to share a really embarrassing <clears throat> story. All right. On this podcast about Is when it I was. Is it embarrassing about tell. for you or me? No, it's for me. Okay. Uh, can I, I guess I have to now. Yeah. You when have I, to, when yeah. I was unemployed for like six months, there was a time in. Uh, where I was like in 2016 I, w- I uh-huh. was I had nothing to do all day and I was just marathoning the Batman the animated series right and I was just laying on the couch in my boxers and I had to fart really bad and I <laughs> fart so hard that I shit myself <laughs> and I never Dude. told anyone about this <laughs> but you're sharing that with us now in our time of need so we can relate to you exactly exactly you do weird content. shit when you're by this yourself this is what we need right now yeah and I just wanted I just wanted to let everybody know that uh you know, nothing wrong with shitting yourself. I mean, just go wash up, you know? If you got the toilet paper. Or like, Grant, you bought a bidet. How about, I bet you're sitting pretty. Oh, you I did? Bought the bidet, I bought the bidet before the uh, whole coronavirus thing even happened. So I'm, yeah, I'm pretty, I feel like safe right now, you know? You don't need toilet so like, paper. You need a little, but I mean, you know. Oh, do you uh, need a little like, at the end to kind of like dry off? Yeah, the, yeah, you got to dry off a little. You got to dry yeah. the bum. Yeah, unless you got one of those ones because there are those that have a, a little heated fan and it blows right into your tuchus, gives you a nice yeah, little I warming. I didn't spend that much money, but uh, yeah, I mean, just a little bit. So yeah, one one roll of toilet paper will last me the next uh, seven weeks. So. Back to the quarantine. <laughs> We're still on routine. the first one. Yeah. We we didn't punish them. All right, oh, go yeah, uh, get I guess I guess your punishment is uh, God, I don't know, man. Alcoholic spiral out of control, kind of like what I'm doing yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah, fuck. exactly. Do, like cope like a normal person, you know. Yeah, do your grieving, backload it, and then you know get better later on. Don't get better right now. You Who know gets what? better right now. We their punishment should just be do something fun and carefree. Like, yeah. what the fuck are you doing with a routine when there aren't time limits and timetables and immediacy for shit? 
enjoy this yeah. little bit of time to have extra stuff to do, like a- a- extra time to do the stuff that you haven't been able to get to. Play play that game you've been meaning to. Get to that backlog you've been trying to get to of either books, comics, movies, shows. Just relax for a bit because it's that's yeah. what's going to get us through this. Yeah. That's what I've been doing. I mean, I've been working from home, which still kind of sucks, which I don't I don't like going to the office either, but and I don't I don't like working, but I guess I have to. I don't think people like working, which is why it's called work. Yes. Oh, yeah. that's what that means? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, but I everyone I'm talking to seems to be doing a lot less work, which if that's something that you don't like doing, I mean, it kind of sucks if you can't generate an income. Don't get me yeah. wrong, but uh yeah, I, I see and I get kind of jealous, man. A lot of my friends are at home, but both of my jobs have kind of stuck through this whole thing. So I'm I'm still like mm-hmm. keeping my same schedule. It's pretty good. It's like GameStop. It's an essential product. I heard. <laughs> can't close. They, yeah, they uh, can't Garrett, close. did you have two minutes of hate? I did. I, uh, I have a, a brief two minutes here and... Uh, you know, I don't uh, dip my toe into, you know, I tweet a lot about video games, but I don't dip my toe into the, like, hardcore Animal Crossing community that often. It uh-huh. skews a, a bit young, I think. And uh, with all this, you know, isolation and game releases on the horizon and everything going on, I was looking at what was, like, a trending tweet. <laughs> And I got to say, I, I dipped my toe in, and my two minutes of hate is uh, going out to the Animal Crossing community for turning my timeline into a full-fledged flame war a la 2005. <laughs> I mean, I just dipped in with a little nudge to, you know, people are trying to get Nintendo to, you know, release Animal Crossing early. At the time of this, it's out. Yeah. yeah. But there's all these stupid fucking petitions you see. Stuff we've talked about on the show before. Like, please, yeah. Nintendo, we went home and we are bored and we don't have anything to do and we would like it if you could release Animal Crossing early. Yes, yeah. You know, and like Hell someone yeah. someone tweeted out uh, and it was like a trending tweet, the, the petition and then uh, a letter to Tom Nook and friends. People were commenting on it. I joined in on the commenting. But then... Like, once that at name is in the thread, your phone is just fucked. Like, I'm getting bombarded with people fighting back and forth. And, uh, I mean, a couple (laughs) examples of... uh, I just... I wanted to say that, uh, you know, maybe this will work because it's kind of the same crowd that got the Sonic movie changed. You know, like, uh, thoughtful face emoji. You know, it should be cute. And then uh, gamers are gamers are a tough crowd, man. Dude, the gamers got back to me. They're telling me that uh, you know this is selfish. They don't feel like waiting for Animal Crossing. They're not going to get this changed. The so- and then they start defending the Sonic movie. Oh my and then God. it's like I'm dipping my toe into Sonic fandom and Animal Crossing fandom. That's bad. It yeah. I mean, it got uh, yeah. <laughs> it, it it got to a point where um, you know typical flame war shit. Till people are telling each other to fuck themselves. Uh, people slinging the word uh, simp and Karen around like it was napalm. Oh my god! Whoa! <laughs> Guy called an 18 year old Animal Crossing fan Karen and she just fucking lost it. Uh, Whoa! These too words far, too these, far. These mimetic warfare uh, <laughs> nukes, they have meaning and they have effect. So my timeline was just fucking annihilated last week, but it's probably for the best because, yeah, everything is just people, uh, one way or another mentioning coronavirus yeah i did see something in related to that uh where again to mention gamestop so they're staying open because they're saying that uh gamestop because i mean grant if you look around neo greek town here right. everything is fucking closed it's it's like a ghost town uh, yeah every, i mean like, so was logan square like i mean i hadn't left the house in days and it, yeah. it wasn't until i came on the train here that everything was a ghost town like i told you there was some fucking old guy in the train station just wandering around like i'm so sick yeah i'm so i've seen sick. more homeless people out now than i've ever seen before like just Man, what everywhere everywhere yeah i mean so, they don't have raining. homes to go to so where I mean, we are yeah oh it's been yeah a week i was like rain same that's same what I was, here. it was so surreal to be out there because it was like california was cold and rainy all week and the world was ending i'm like what the <laughs> hell what the hell's happening yeah so if, gamestop if you, is all they're staying they're staying open during all this they're weathering the storm uh they're weathering the hellfire and they said that so doom and animal crossing come out on the same day and they said they're really for the sake of social distancing they're releasing 
Doom early the day on April 19th, which is the day we're recording this, and then they're going to release Animal Crossing on April... When I'm sorry, March. April, March 20th. What the yeah. hell? Yeah, I don't even know what fucking month it is. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> to the end. And uh, the funniest comment I saw was, this is blatant homophobia. Not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. They said, they said, not kidding. This rules. Yeah. I'm all in for it, man. So it's homophobic to release Animal Crossing on the day it's supposed to come out and release Doom a day earlier. I don't Be- fucking know, yeah. man. Because, uh, I don't... Well, okay. Are they implying that gay people play Animal Crossing? I guess. Well, sign me up. I mean, I'm playing it. Yeah, I'm playing both. Well, we, we or, or is it to, like, this like, separate already. them? Like, <laughs> the, the people who are going to play Doom and the people who are going to play Animal Crossing aren't, like, the same people for some reason? I mean, like, it, it seems to me that, like, all the same people are getting the two games. <laughs> yeah, the hardcore gamers. <laughs> They're all going to show up again the fucking day after, you know? Yeah. We, got, we got a lot of crossover. I mean, like, there's all these memes about uh, Isabella and the Doom Slayer are best friends, which, to be quite frank, I'll be happy to see that over and done with. Um, it was cute at oh, first. Like it. Yeah. Exactly. Like it cute at, like, yeah, cute at first, but then, like everything else. I'm so glad that I'm not as involved in video games as you people. That's right. You hey. people. I said you people. How dare you? <laughs> hey, I don't, I don't blame How you either. You? The best thing you can do is stay away from the, the crappiness about the culture of video yes. games. Yes. Oh, Stay away terrible. from all the people talking about it. Stay away from all the speculation. Stay away from all the people who don't know what they're saying about the subject. Listen yeah. to the developers. Listen to the historians. Listen to the people who actually care about video games. Not the people who are just mad because I want my Christmas presents early. I want, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I want red <laughs> shoes instead of blue shoes. Like Those people ruin everything. They ruin Star Wars. They ruin Napoleon Dynamite. They ruin everything that's cool for a second because it's charming. But Brian, yes. Tifa's tits are too small now, and I'm raging. <laughs> oh, no! Dude, at what least... What am I supposed to jerk off to now? Porn? This one yeah. looks That's like disgusting. a woman. At least this one looks like a person. <laughs> you're right, you're Instead right. Instead of, a, you know, a cardboard yeah. cutout that, that you see people make it at, at video game and, co- and, and comic conventions, they, they have to put together, like, cardboard to give that look of 16-bit. And I like that angle. bit like like Madonna boobs what like are you big guys triangles. complaining about oh it's not how I remember it I remember pointiness I don't know when blur now we get to see high fidelity Midgar and run around that city I'm stoked so yeah. so on the on the topic of gamers here Garrett what's your punishment for these Animal Crossing right. uh, so uh, you know I I probably should punish the person who created the whole petition to get it uh, out early but I want to uh, really punish the gal who just couldn't let my little tag to the highly tweeted post go on. She had to reply back and say that actually the Sonic movie was edited for the public. Cons- you know, they wanted their mind. Uh, they had their minds made up and they wanted to change it for the good of humanity because it was some dumb. And it, it, for her spiraling my uh, whole timeline out of control, I, I think the punishment uh, should be that she doesn't get to play Animal Crossing. And I know I looked at your profile and I, that's all you're obsessed with. I've seen all of the New Leaf uh, content on there, all of the... Uh, pocket camp content as well and i feel like you should be banned your nintendo account should be taken away <laughs> yeah. you are not allowed to play not early because certainly don't want it early and uh not late either you shouldn't be able to play at all only doom it's toxically masculine and you should only be allowed to play it so hand over your badge hand over your friend code you're done yeah tom nook repossesses your house and the doom slayer suit shows up on your front door have fun <laughs> suit up this is, uh, yeah, this is the Karen that I was talking about. Had to fucking derail the combo. Uh, Brian, did you have a two minutes of hate? Anything that's bugging you? Anything you want to see some justice brought upon? Yeah, I, def- I definitely have something um, that I think, I think everybody could kind of relate to on this one. Um, we, I, I use Twitter as a, as a method of getting some of my news or just seeing what's going on with people, like, you know, in the culture of things. So when I go to Twitter and I see like rising hashtags or trending hashtags and topics, I'm interested. I see that as an invitation to go learn more about what is going on. But every single yeah. time I click on a hashtag, it takes me to a billion people talking about what the hashtag is and none of it is about 
the information of the occurrence, the, the subject, oh, or man. anything else. It's like hashtag not Oprah. Yeah. About. Like, like this oh, week was God. hashtag not Oprah. <laughs> right. What did Oprah do? What did she do? I don't know. I spent 20 minutes looking at these hashtags, trying to figure out what it was they were saying. One side said that she touched <laughs> kids. The other side saying that she didn't touch kids and this is all a conspiracy. And so I spent 20 minutes not learning about what actually happened, but what some unverified mm-hmm. people had to say. So for me, like any time it, it used to be back in the day, when you hit that hashtag, you saw good <laughs> aggregation of quality information. Hey, Here's what's actually going on right now, and then all the editorial. So my my two minutes of hate has to go to the trending hashtags on Twitter because they are not helpful at all. I had this problem today because uh, rumor has it that uh, Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot was going to be shutting the city down. And before I came over here, because I took the train here, I was like, I I should probably look and see if the the trains are going to be running or see Uh what the hell, if if this city's still going to be active. You just have to walk all the way over here like I do sometimes, just walk all the way from Logan Square to Greektown. Yeah, that's quite a while or quite a ways, guys. It's It's uh, like an hour. Yeah. An hour walk. At four in the morning. Nor- normal four in the morning walk. Yeah. In yeah. shorts? I clear, my, I clear my mind. Yeah. Oh. Wearing shorts and all, baby. Oh, you fucking maniac. So I, I looked because uh, uh, Lori Lightfoot hashtag was trending the mayor of Chicago and I clicked yeah. on it and it was all these people <clears throat> talking around the subject. And I'm like, am I going to go out there and evaporate or can I go to Grants and do my dang show and bring laughs to the world? <laughs> I got to know. <laughs> I had um, like a, I had a similar two minutes of hate, and I don't think I ever brought it in. But I think what set it off, I remember like on maybe a couple months ago, maybe close to a year ago, I saw some random celebrity like was trending, and let's just say it was like Danny Glover, and you you click the link because it's trending, and it says like all the tweets regarding it were like oh i i thought danny glover had died yeah and it's just like but what did he do when you scroll and you scroll and you scroll and there was no information and it's like you know what i don't fucking care okay i don't care what the fuck danny glover did he's not dead i know that nobody's saying anything all all of the conversation is just like oh i saw he was trending and he didn't die lol and it's like but what happened Dude, or why or, is he trending? Yeah. It, yeah, it's the same thing. It'd be like, D- oh, happy that Danny Glover didn't do anything wrong. So then why what the fuck was he trending to begin with? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give me some basic information. And the I worst like, part of this is why do I care? <laughs> yeah. That's that's the other part. And so that so this brings me to the to the biggest thing of like, this is the difference between centralized media and broadened media. When we all have the control to to put our to put our voices out there. That's why news media had to be so fair and balanced and not just report on whatever's coming up because shit, you can say whatever you want and a thousand things could sound like they're facts in the in in such a fast time. But god damn it, how many TV shows have we seen with that same plot line and the resolution ends up being don't jump to conclusions everyone? Like why are yeah. we doing that? Why are we perpetuating especially in the time that we're in now where information needs to get out there? Why are we why are we speaking about any topic unless we have something to add to it? For the lulls, oh, man, the, I think. <laughs> yeah. The number the one thing that pops into my mind when you say that is the uh, the Boston Marathon bombing and how yeah. all of Reddit was like trying to figure out who the bomber was and all this shit. And they just like like pointed to all of these people that had nothing to do with it and like ruined so many people's lives. Oh, and then the, shit. the, the fucking comment was like, we did it. Reddit. That's where that comes from. Oh, like my that's my God. favorite oh. thing. It's just like, Oh, we figured out who the Boston bomber was before the FBI did. We did it. Reddit. And it's like, no, you pointed to a kid that like had died two weeks earlier. Yeah. Like have you- your up dude. <laughs> well, that reminds me of that Netflix documentary. Don't fuck with cats. That group on Facebook, like, fucked over and got some guy uh, to kill himself in yeah. that. Because it was like uh, their little slew thing was aiming, you know, at the wrong person. Yeah. I, I, I can't, that that was a little hard to follow if that guy was up to no good, too. But still, like, you're ruining lives. Bad. Yeah. It's Everybody careless. thinks they're the fucking mystery gang from Scooby Doo, <laughs> and then you get someone to kill themselves. You know, it's not a fucking joke. Yeah. Nope. Uh, it's careless. That being said, Brian, now's your chance. You can punish these folks spreading uh, all this. I, I don't even. I don't even want to call it misinformation. I just want to call it useless information. Just talking around the subject. How would you punish them? 
Uh, I, I would say that anybody who misuses a hashtag to only add opinion would have to have like the their ability to hashtag taken away for some certain amount of time, or they would now have to then go through a verification process to use any hashtag anytime they want to use it. So that would be it. They would have to yes. go through a verification process for any hashtag that's in, in, in big use at that moment. You're adding tiers. Blue check marks first. <laughs> then yeah. the little circle if with only the we seven trust in them. it. Yeah. I oh mean, yeah, Grant's got his little workaround. Yeah. And I can't it, trust it, anybody. It's Back a J now. Line. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, really I know we're kind of jumping around a lot, but Grant, I don't think we mentioned this on the show. Uh you can't put those in your name anymore. Well I, but you got grandfathered, I'm grandfathered in. in, yeah. Nice. Um so there's like these little symbols uh you can put in your uh Twitter handle. That looks like a verification symbol, like a little J inside of a circle. Yeah. And you can't do it anymore, but Grant did it and he never took it out. <laughs> so I think... <laughs> so I can have that for forever now. Yeah. Nice. So now everybody will think you work for BuzzFeed. How's that feel? It feels pretty bad. Pretty bad. <laughs> uh, so Grant, what's your two minutes of hate? Uh, my two minutes of hate is uh, joblessness. Ah. Uh, I don't have a job right now. Patreon.com slash thought cops. Seriously, <laughs> patreon.com slash thought cops. Subscribe to us on Twitch. Uh, send me Bitcoin. Do whatever you got to do. It, it sucks. Like, yeah. I, I feel like all of these side hustles of like, you know, doing thought cops, stuff like that. Like, I was driven to do it because I have this job that i mean I, I like my job i like what i do i don't like the place that i work for you know that's what everybody well no maybe not everybody a lot most. of people don't like their job at all most people that's why they call um, it work that's why they call it work i learned that today yeah um but now it's just like well i have nothing but time and i have i have all the time in the world to play video games and watch movies and watch tv catch up on all my stuff and like what do i want to do is absolutely nothing it's just like this big fucking black hole of like what do you feel like doing right now and it's like absolutely nothing sooner or later you're watching a cartoon from 1992 and shitting your pants (laughs) (laughs) that's not that far off i mean that's that's how i sat through and watched like cheers like the first few seasons of cheers i was unemployed and boy do we figure why not (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah and i mean there's something to i don't like the grind of wanting to get things done and like having some form of regularity to you know like your life in general and like all of a sudden the mat is fucking stripped from underneath your feet and you're just like well what do i do now and it's like nothing i have no obligations i have nothing to do i filed for unemployment the fucking unemployment website for illinois fucking sucks by the way yeah it's the buggiest fucking thing it doesn't work it kept glitching out it's probably like oh. overloaded with people that are fucking apl- applying for unemployment right now i oh, don't sure. in the chat says uh learn a new skill you could uh Learn a language. Yeah, see, he's saying learn a new skill, learn a language. He's probably going to put other proactive stuff in there. Try yoga, you know, put uh, avocado on your bagel. Make a routine. Eat yoga. (laughs) Mandarin so you can curse them out. Eat yoga. What are we eating at Subway? Remember that whole new story? No. No. Yoga mats. The bread was made out of yoga mats. Yeah. I remember that now. Yeah. But yeah, like there's all these things that I feel like I should be doing. And I want to do absolutely none of it. I want to do nothing. And so I've been I've been taking like these fucking eight hour long naps. I'll yeah. wake up <laughs> and then I'll just like go back to sleep right away. And it's That's just like, what am I fucking sleep, doing? Friend. Yeah, it's depressing, man. It, it sucks. Hey, if this is if this is what you feel like doing right now, then I would say do that for right now for as long as it feels like it's fun. Like you can decide what you do every single day you have no obligations like you said you you have no things to report to and kind of everybody doesn't either so you're kind of in the clear to enjoy this because likely the next like you don't want to keep doing this forever and hopefully the next thing that you start doing is going to be something that you can stick on for a while so when's the next time you're going to have this much let's let's put it vacation time without any obligations do whatever right. you want, man. That's what I did. Staycation, right? You, you know, you know what I what got me through it is uh, 
uh, Garrett was talking to me about how he was building out his FOBs, his front operating bases on Metal Gear Solid Five, The Phantom Pain. And yeah, he kind of gave me a I crash course on how to farm and build that out. So I spent a thousand hours <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I finished the whole thing. I got all four forward operating bases to all full capacity. I'm running at a thousand percent now. It took me about 1800 hours, but you know what? You know, I, I had really nothing else to do. So, you know, get, get yourself a video game hobby. Yeah, Grant. I mean, you don't know much about, you know, games uh, like, uh, I guess, you, you, the minutia of what we were talking about earlier. But, right. like, you do play games. <laughs> nothing yeah. is vibing with you right now, like, that's about to come out. I've been playing uh, Super Mario Odyssey. I finally repurchased that after an ex-girlfriend basically stole all the video games that oh, I fucking had purchased. Yeah, yeah, seriously. Uh, the one thing, the one thing that brought me joy in my life, and you had to steal all of them, hey, man, well, all of my, my Switch games, gotta, you had to gotta, steal all of my Switch games. Hey, you could just ask me, man. I can let you borrow games. <laughs> I know, but it, it's, the, it's the fucking principle behind it. Yeah. But I've been playing um, Mario Odyssey. I've been laying in bed, like playing Mario Odyssey, looking for all the purple coins. A great oh, hell game. yeah, that's a and great. It is just, a great game. Yeah, and then I'll pass out and I'll sleep for eight hours and I'll wake up and I'll pick it up again. And you gotta more, find those purple coins. More masturbation than usual. I find myself kind of in in a, <laughs> when I'm in a slump, I tend to jerk it a few more times than average. And what else are you gonna do? Cheers, you yeah. Up. I don't like not. I'm. I don't even feel First cheered up second, by it. Yeah. I just feel more like depressed. It's just like I don't even uh, want to watch this. I've been uh, listening yeah. to fucking uh I've been listening to lectures by Slavoj Žižek. That's what <laughs> wow. I've been doing with my spare time is I've been falling asleep listening to fucking leftist economic lectures by a communist is what I've been doing with my spare time while playing yeah, Mario Odyssey. Very strange juxtaposition. But not that uncommon, I don't think. Probably not, no. Mario and G-Jock are pretty much the same person. Yeah. If you really think about it. So, what's your punishment? Um, I don't know. I, th- I think that uh, Brian's probably right. Maybe I just need to uh, ride the wave out. Just yeah. see, where well, it, it, see where it lands me. I got nothing case, else to do but I mean, fucking do that. You're not alone, though. You know, yeah. it's like tons of people are... I am alone. Issue. We're all alone. <laughs> <laughs> We're all alone together. <laughs> We're all alone together. That's right. Together. Right. Podcast to the people. Christ. It's true. It's true. Kevin, you said that we were the new National Guard. And yeah. uh, I think I think you're right. And I think you, we should uh, announce that it's martial law and the new National Guard, us podcasters, we're in charge. Oh, God. We're keeping GameStop <laughs> open, Brian. <laughs> Oh, world run by podcasters. What mayhem in Bedlam. Um, if you're a 29-year-old white straight male, do not, I repeat, do not start a podcast. I saw so many of those I fucking have, tweets. I have been seeing a lot of those, and I mean, I do have some feelings on that because there's a lot of podcasts. Yeah. And I know that there's a lot of people, like, you know, here in Chicago, we know a lot of comedians who get their work by doing shows and open mics exclusively. Yeah, that's how you all promote. Of those, yeah, all of those are canceled. Yeah. Uh, but I was actually talking to Brandon Kirkman last night. So yeah. in, in lieu of his uh, open mic that he normally does on Tuesdays, mm-hmm. he's going to be hosting it on uh, on Twitch. And they're going to be playing great. the cat. They're going to be playing the, the the movie Cats in the background, and they're going to awesome. tr- they're going to try to get their hands on the butthole cut too. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, but there is a sure. cut of the movie uh, Cats where they they had. So there was digital artists that put the buttholes on the characters. Is that real? Because and I read they, an article about it, but then people were like, "That's not real." But so then I read I another know, article man. that was like, "Yes, it is real." And You're it's like, I don't the, fucking know anymore. <laughs> I don't know either. I, I I got the information you have. It's the same thing Which as the nothing. fucking Twitter trending thing. I think it's uh. It's yes. one of those things where, uh, yeah. where smart and very gifted artists went in and added it to the existing film. I do not yeah. think that, that in any capacity, if you believe that they made an original cut of this movie <laughs> with cat assholes, I don't know what's wrong with you guys. <laughs> Like it, like listeners, Dude. anybody out there, come the fuck on! You I don't think know. The, you think they put cat assholes in this movie? In this dystopian hellscape, and then maybe not. It, it's not far from a possibility. <laughs> no, they put it. There are people later who who like who like the idea, who want to get off on it, and good on you. I, I appreciate your talent and your gumption. <laughs> 
<laughs> but like, there's no way the studio who met, who spent millions of dollars on this movie had an error in judgment to go, we're going to agree with cat assholes in the first cut of this movie. <laughs> there is no way. I mean, we all saw the Sonic, or the original Sonic. I mean, it's just. He didn't have an asshole, though. He looked no. like one. <laughs> Who, is, it, <laughs> is it Studio Ghibli movies that always draw the little X on the dog or cat's asshole uh, in their uh, animations? I think a lot of anime does. I mean, the yeah. only one I know for sure was uh, Fully Cooley Cat oh, Hill. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Asterisk yeah. for a butthole. It's cute. Anyway, all that aside, uh, if you haven't listened to Thought Cops before... Speaking of assholes. Yeah, speaking of assholes. <laughs> oh, we, we got a couple right here in the room. Uh, if you haven't listened to Thought Cops before, every week we investigate the internet's outrage-inducing news stories, and then we sentence each perpetrator to a cruel and often quite unusual punishment. So let's take it away here. Bake him away, toys. All right, we're all we're all aware of the pandemic upon us, right? Right. A lot of crazy shit. Hard uh-huh. to avoid. Some would say impossible. However, one man found a way to be oblivious to it. And that man was Jared Leto. What? Yeah. I'm going to Google this, Grant. So Jared Leto was on some kind of uh, meditation retreat. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I did bag. see this. And he came out, and they're like, sir, there's a pandemic right now. The whole world is uh, in disarray. And he went on Twitter, and he's like, I was in a meditation retreat for two... I don't know why I'm doing a Donald Trump voice. <laughs> 12 I'm days, keep, yeah. I want to keep doing it. I was in a meditation retreat for two weeks. It was it was huge. The best meditation retreat there is. Right. And I came out, and there's a pandemic. The whole world's in disarray. Can you believe this? Sad. More or less, that's what he said. Uh, but he did a tweet thread basically bragging about the fact that he didn't know what was going on. And now he knows. And uh, that's pretty much all anyone can talk about. And on the Mega64 podcast, you guys do your own Joker update where you follow the comings and goings of Jared Leto uh, yeah. on, on the background, in the front. I think, Brian, did we start that when it was Heath Ledger? I don't know. I think it, I think we started Joker updates... When they announced that Jared Leto was going to do it. It was because of our friend <laughs> because, Leto, yeah. Because he kept talk, like it, he kept doing shit. He kept like sending anal beads out to people, yeah. or, like being awful uh, on the set. He so. mailed rats to like Will Smith's kids or bullets or something. It, it was all like PR bullshit to like <laughs> viral market the movie, but uh twisted. Yeah, we started yeah, absolutely twisted. Seemed damaged. like every other week he was doing something else that was like totally out- outlandish and really shitty. Yeah, so this whole 12 days of isolation, it just made me think of like a full-on Joker move. That's sort of how how Heath Ledger's Joker sort of came into being, because I think Heath Ledger sort of locked him up, locked himself up into like a hotel room and just like created the character for like six weeks or something like that. Oh, real quick update. Uh, Sleep Science in the podcast chat just said all of California just went into full lockdown. Yeah, I just huh. saw that while we were uh, oh no we shit were, uh, recording this. Uh, Gavin Fuck, Newsom dude. just came out. Our governor of California is Gavin Newsom, and just mm-hmm. said that uh, basically. Let me re- let me read it so I can get the uh, well, what? stay at home order. What about GameStop though? Well, <laughs> they have a mandate. Their corporate says stay open, so they're staying open. Okay, cool. But the governor of California says stay at home unless. Unless you don't have to. So, again, this isn't I'm gonna if you listen, go outside, you're going to get sick. Uh, I'm going to listen to my regional what, manager at, at GameStop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the, yeah. This the is ultimate like, higher power. Yeah. Exactly. But this is a this is a governor-issued thing. Like, before it was like, yeah, you know, you should probably, like, chill at, at home. Like, you should probably not go out. Now it's, hey, listen, do not go outside unless you are going to work or going to the grocery store, going to help people that need to go to the grocery store. Like, just... Really stay inside unless you have to go outside. It's not dangerous to be outside. You can still take your dogs for walks. You can still exercise. Oh, hell practice yeah. social distancing. But we're really, really, really taking this seriously now because the other metric I just heard was that in eight weeks, the uh, the cases in California are going to be up to about 56%. So, oh, breaking, breaking news. But pre-TMZ, guys. Yeah, by the time you guys hear this, it's probably already going to be at over 56% because it's probably yeah. already at 56%. And in two weeks, they'll probably have the testing ready. Well, I hope... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Jared Leto better have gotten out of that uh, 
12 day retreat and he's going to go into another, you know, six week retreat. It sounds like in the yeah, Hollywood put him Hills. Back in. We're, <laughs> yeah. we're, we're, well, I, I want to say that we want to keep him safe, but the truth is we're all sick of him. Yeah. <laughs> he wore, he wore out his welcome, right? Yes. Here's, here's my impression of uh, the TMZ covering this story. You ready? I'm ready. Go. Jared Leto was on a 12 <laughs> week yoga retreat. Namaste. Little did he know when he would come back. (laughs) All right, I'm done. That's all all I can do. Thanks, Harv. (laughs) I would love to work in that office. Man, what is... Scummiest people. (laughs) They only do is hang out on their cubicle walls and just... They hang out with their, their, like, Visco Girl water bottles. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So let's just punish. What is does punish him? Put him back in isolation. Yeah. To protect him. <laughs> wink, wink. Yeah. Stick no, him in a him... jail cell. Throw away the key. Yeah. It's for, this is for your own good, Jared. Just stay in there. We'll come back for you in 18 months or, right. or more. Right. Because when this is all done, we don't want him anymore. So we just won't tell him when it's over. Just keep him locked up. Yeah. Just like Warner Brothers will silently give him the boot and replace him with a better actor. Yeah. I, I mean, know, I shouldn't say that. Jared Leto is actually a good actor. That's the shittiest. That's the shittiest thing about it is that Jared Leto is legitimately very gifted or well talented. He developed that skill, but everything he does outside of it is so just eye rolling. It's insane. It's like, like 30 like seconds said. to Mars. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Listen, if you guys ever, if you share in your dislike for Jared Leto, and and you want to watch something that'll make you feel really good? Go ahead, watch, put in Fight Club, the, the great great film from uh, oh from, yeah from yeah. our time. Jared Leto's in that movie. Forget that he's in that. He he is in a lot of good stuff. He gets the but, shit beat out of his face in that yeah. movie. So it, it, if he you gets guys are that kind, broken, yeah, yeah. If you can get vindication from that, I mean, it is he destroys something beautiful in that movie. That's for sure. <laughs> Nico, Nico in the chat yeah. says, uh, "My friend met Jared Leto when she was a teen, and she had no idea who he was, and he got mad at her for not knowing him." <laughs> was it in a grocery <laughs> store? Sounds about right. Yeah, it, at the Winn Dixie. I, 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 let's see. What, I don't know. We'll see what she says. Was it in a grocery store? Did he ask all his items to be uh, uh, rung up individually to prevent electronic interference? You mean oh, like the name? Let, let's, yeah, yeah, okay. let's move on. Let's move on. She's typing. God, let's see. It was she said it was some party because her parents are one percenters. <laughs> Great God. Okay, speaking of the coronavirus, can we? Which let's, one? This one? I want. Let's oh, okay. Really, you really wanna, quick, yeah. Okay, yeah. I guess we got so, we got to talk about this is the this is the coronavirus episode. So you know, life moves on, right? Right. Sure. Well, right. kind of, kind yeah. of. Life, life, kind of moves on. But that's not stopping uh, college students from partying it up at spring break. <laughs> if I get corona, I get corona. At the end of the day, I'm not going to let it stop me from partying. You know, I've been waiting. We've been waiting for Miami spring break for a while. About Dude, his nose is all red. Play. Two, three months. Yeah, he's not drunk out of his mind right now. Whatever happens, happens. Like, it's really messing up with my spring break. All these people in this video look terrible. They look sick. They look awful. It's really messing up. I think they're blowing it way It's really messing up my spring break. Way too much. Doing us bad. We need a refund. Posse vibes only. Virus ain't that serious. It's serious. It's more serious things out there like hunger and poverty and we need to address that. <laughs> Jesus. We planned this a long Preach, time King. ago and it was kind of up in the air if we were still go but like we're here I just turned 21 this year so Hell we yeah, a party queen. so it's kind of disappointing <laughs> but Jeez, we're just worst. making the most of it. We met these other people in our little Airbnb spot so we're just hanging out with them and trying to get drunk before everything closes. Live, laugh, love, you know? <laughs> I mean, it yeah. sucks but we're going to make the best we're of it. Enjoying our we're enjoying time, ourselves. Yeah. It sucks. And I'm from New Orleans, so this really sucks. However, what does that have to do with this? Katrina. It's my birthday. I, it took me day. the second time watching Turn this. Up. We're just trying Turn to up. with the boy. We're just living for the moment. We're just going oh for it. We're just going to do what happens, when it happens. When stuff closes, we're going to do it when it closes. But uh, <laughs> uh, besides that, we're just trying to have the best trip we can. We're- Hell yeah, bro. Th- this is like... You guys have seen Harmony Crin's Spring Breakers, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like I have this not, is, but this is the comedy of that movie. The subtle, like, dry humor of Spring Breakers is that right. this isn't a joke. There are people who come in <laughs> to Miami with this mindset 
and they are here to party and do drugs and have fun. And again, if that's what you like to do. I'm 21. Yeah. I'm 21. This is fucking up my, my birthday vacation. But like, it's so crazy to see this movie actually have immediate real world impact. People still in Miami want to go to spring break, regardless of the fact that like there's a fucking pandemic going on. Oh, I guarantee you all the bars are having like a discount sale on Corona beer too. Oh, like, it's, all oh, no. it's all tied in. Crazy. It's too bad that it's only killing old people. I feel like it should only <laughs> kill Gen Z kids. Well, that, that's how I found that video earlier today. I actually saw it because it was Gen Zers or, or uh, yeah, millennials and Gen Zers are, are going to start getting more sick because of how careless they're treating this actual like no. quarantine. It's right. a, it's a silliness that we, like we think somehow if the government and the World Health Organization which is not part of a centralized government, is telling us to do stuff. Mm -hmm. It's funny how we don't want to listen. It's the New World Order, folks. <laughs> it's out to get you. Yeah. I do love, like, when you read these people's names as it goes by, like, the first guy's name is Brady. Of course, <laughs> of course his fucking name is Brady. Yeah. The one black guy's name is Atlantis. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, they're all... You couldn't write just a fucking sketch the this worst. good. <laughs> exactly. You couldn't. You couldn't. <laughs> Hell yeah. It, that's a fucking problem. Like, people keep saying this shit like, oh, at least, you know, a, a Trump presidency will, will be good for uh, comedy. And Fuck it's like, that. no, you Fuck can't that. write shit better than this. You like, can't. <laughs> and it's like, the reality is so absurd. You can't even parody it's it anymore. It's so much worse. This is beyond parody. Yeah. And like, it's... Like, nature is a better writer than any of us. <laughs> well, no, really I mean, that's is. exactly it. You, you start to realize that a lot of what makes comedy so good is that it doesn't, it, it does, it's not creating something funny. It's finding what's funny in things that already exist. Like, yeah. this shit has, like, George Carlin is one of my favorite comedians, greatest of all time, but most of mm. what he was doing He's was. He's the goat, right? He, dude, he was up there just giving <laughs> observations. No <laughs> way, giving bro. observations. Just, with a funny tone. Yeah. And that yeah. and that's all it is. Most comedians are just super observant people. Like Norm MacDonald, one of my other favorite comedians, a super dry, dry comedian. That's uh -huh. all he does is go up there and he gives little details that we all notice, but nobody knows how to communicate in a way that we all understand. So it's a really cool art that 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 you can develop. But yeah, like What's the deal with this coronavirus, huh? <laughs> right, but like oh, Jerry, think about Jerry Seinfeld's just, uh, yeah. his brand of comedy, right? Like the way that he does his comedy, it's it's mm -hmm. life comedy. It's things that we all deal with. These questions, burning questions that we all have in our head that we can't ask. And si similarly, La Larry David does that too. But like though though that type of comedy to me is so much more funny than like Sl not necessarily i don't want to say then slapstick but has so much more potential for nuance than just like dick and fart jokes or like you know pee pee and poo poo jokes while they still have their Those, spot they still hold on they still hold yeah. their place <laughs> they do D they dude, have... don't get me wrong super troopers is great but like and that's like highbrow pee pee poo poo jokes but like <laughs> like yeah i like variety i like variety i always want to have every rest, little bit yeah yeah, yeah i want to have something that's a little bit more cohesive and and more fun than just like like that alone well, isn't funny need. that alone isn't funny especially in an audio what, what was that what, what was that adam sandler uh western movie that was on netflix the, the oh, oh. epic six or something yeah or, whatever that was yeah. yeah so bad it was like <laughs> it was exactly what you're describing <laughs> Oh, and that's because, like, <laughs> there's the other side of it is there's somebody like me and I like a well-crafted joke that has a payoff because I understand uh -huh. how comedy is, is constructed, how to Your make jokes. Your genius brain, man. Well, no, I mean, we've been doing comedy with Mega64 <laughs> and on our own for at least for close to 20 years now. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's like to do it that long, you have to develop some way of actually building funny jokes and having payoffs. So I appreciate the fact that there's comedy out there that you can take in and just laugh with like beavis and butthead that's a that's a great example of you don't need to have much brain power on it's just lay level like right down the middle super fun super chill but again not a lot of brain power but then you watch a show that like you know like home movies or you watch a show like mission hill right. and it's more dialogue driven there's more nuance more like comedy within the scenes and within the the way they describe stuff than mm -hmm. just 
which again can be funny, but isn't the only thing that's funny. Mm. You know, speaking of Beavis and Butthead, perhaps they would be at this spring break trying to score. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Dude, people you know, are talking you know, about you, coronavirus. Yeah. I want to get corona. <laughs> Butthead, they got corona at the spring break. <laughs> <laughs> it writes <Sweet>. itself. <laughs> <laughs> I do I do feel like uh Brian I I fully like understand and appreciate what you're talking about. I feel like the type of stuff that I'm like that I'm attracted to in comedy right now is sort of like the meta narrative around that type of stuff which is to say like there's certain observations that people sort of make based on, you know, naturalized phenomenon that we all sort of, you know, collectively see. But like sometimes the realization of that and then putting like an ironic twist on that and then understanding that like irony in and of itself sort of dilutes it. So like you add a second layer of irony to be like, I know we're being ironic, but we understand that we're being ironic. Like, I, I think that's what I like about, uh, I'll plug him again because you know, fuck it. Uh, be nice to me productions. I feel like has such a good grasp on that type of stuff because it's like, we know shit's fucked up in a certain sort of way, but like you got to craft a narrative around why we think it's fucked up. But then you have to add like a second layer of like, but this is like us taking it to the extreme to make a broader point of like why it's fucked up in the first place. Not just like pointing at it and going, Hey, this is fucked up, but like, Hey, we're all fucked up. Right. You know? Yeah. Does yeah, that make exactly. sense? It does. A, a great show <laughs> that did that that a lot of people don't give enough credit to is uh, is Arrested Development. Um, you right. go back and you watch Arrested <clears throat> Development a few times, and you no- you start to notice that the the well, who we thought was the paragon of the show, and Michael Bluth, this like mm-hmm. stalwart guy who's trying to be the best guy ever, l- like take a step back and 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 piece by piece what he does to his family in that show. He always talks about abandoning his family when he knows that they rely on him. He's the most organized person and the most like you know thoughtful of what they need to do. He constantly steals his brother's girlfriends and love interests, or yeah. puts himself in positions to do so. Like, he's selfish when it comes to his relationship with his son. He doesn't listen to a, a single word that his son is actually saying. But you don't notice that until you've seen it a few times. Because the first time you watch it, you're like, look at this wacky family doing silly ass shit. Oh, it's yeah. really cute. They do these pop culture references that I get. Oh, yeah. When when Buster's in the car singing Domo Arigato, Mr. Roboto, that's a reference to a commercial he did in the early 90s that who the fuck would remember that reference? For some yeah. reason, me. But, like, <laughs> that is the kind of shit that, that, like, a great show can be funny on the surface. Simpsons did this well. And then still have nuance and bits of it that bring out that, uh, that like, deeper, funnier, longer-standing joke. Because if you go back and you watch, like, seasons three through six of The Simpsons, there is, like, depth to that that I never saw. Right. Well, we can all binge that while we're in self quarantine. Disney Plus. Yeah, Might right. as well. Yeah. Might as well. Uh, yeah. So binge The Simpsons. Don't go to Panama. Don't party it up. Cut your losses. No. You know you're gonna be these these kids are gonna be in so much student debt soon enough. Mm-hmm. Stay home and start paying it off. That's my I, I bet the governor of Florida at this time has now declared them also. Uh, you know, a quarantine state. Just, they're going to cut that thing off, Florida. Yeah, let it float down the fucking river. Isolate it. Yeah, hey, cut, look how they're cut, acting down there. Cut Florida off like the skin tag it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, Shata. I actually, I, I've been to Florida a couple times. Florida's pretty cool. Yeah, St. Uh, August. St. Augustine for EXP Con, and I uh, hope to make it out there to, to Disney World. But, uh, man, yeah, right now y'all acting crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Bring it together, guys. We're going to cut you off. Uh, Grant... You got something you want to pull up here? I got a couple things. Um, there's, there's so much. I know we're, we, had yeah. to, we. I don't know if we're going to have time to get to it all, but like this is. I think I feel like this is going to be a longer episode than usual, but that's I mean, okay want, yeah, because nobody cool, else you know, has. Yeah. Wanna, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm good. Okay. Cool. Oh, and we just got a new voice mail from Zwick's mom, which we'll be playing towards the end of the episode. So Hell stay yeah. tuned, everybody. Uh, but pull up what you're gonna. Yeah, let me. Uh, I want to pull this up. This is, yeah, this is all just going to have to be fucking, uh, this is, this is the coronavirus episode. Yeah, they get a long, you know, more bang for their buck. As if everybody's not already sick of hearing about this thing. 
We're going to talk about it because we have to. Oh, oh this, there's the two Cuomo's. This, yeah. I, w- I was oh, like, I just saw before this we started recording. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was like, but right when we started recording, I was like, oh shit, I meant to put this on the dock. Right. I'm glad that you did. Yeah. So uh, this is a video of, uh, we'll watch this in a second. It's a video of the two Cuomo brothers. The two. The, the two, Fredos. The Fredos. <laughs> I'm sorry. What did you we, say? Bleep that out. Yeah, bleep that out, please. The two Fredo brothers. Uh, one of them's the governor. One of them's the uh, CNN anchor. And they're one of them's interviewing the other one. And it goes just about as well as you think that a CNN interview would go. <laughs> They get so personal. It's oh great. Uh, let let's let's just watch it. Mamma mia. <laughs> uh, curfew. I don't like the word curfew. Dad tried to have a curfew for me. <laughs> I never got past the resentment. But uh, I do believe you'll see the least more tightening if the numbers way. don't slow. The problems with the curfew. He's aggressive the from the jump. Just so you know. I never find yeah. you violated the curfew all the time. Oh, it caused much pain. That's a <laughs> big I don't believe in those. Governor Andrew Cuomo, I appreciate <laughs> yeah. you coming on the show. What is I this? love you. I'm proud of what you're doing. I know you're working hard for your state. But no matter how hard you're working, there's always time to call mom. She wants to hear from you. Oh, just so you know. Yeah, I called mom. I called mom just not before I said. came on this show. Not what she, said. she said I was her favorite. She, said she, loses. she said you were her second favorite. Second favorite son, no. Christopher. We both know care. neither of us are mom's first or second favorite in the family. I can't believe you're lying to my audience. You've blown the oh, credibility oh, entirely. Jesus. Oh, oh my God. God. Second favorite son. Oh. Listen to the words. Listen to the words. Oh, my God. Tricky. This is oh, insane. In after the first time you said it. Creates a lot of doubt, but I appreciate not me, you clarifying. Not me. Straight across the plate. Stay <laughs> straight across the plate. Oh my God. Stay strong. Stay for your people, and I appreciate you being here. I love you, brother. You right. too, brother. So oh, speaking of the rest of development, <laughs> that is oh the most Italian God. thing I've ever seen. Yeah, that, that felt like a scene straight out of the uh, straight out of the Irishman. Wow. I mean, more or less, yeah. <laughs> More or less. Yeah, mom, mom says I love. Mom says she loves you more. Yeah, right. Yeah. You know, mom doesn't love you more than me. When was the last <laughs> time you were over for Sunday gravy? Ma hasn't seen you in a week. Were you calling your mother? Come on, hey, <laughs> second hey, favorite. Hey, little second Joey. Favorite. I got, I got your uncle Andrew on the phone. It I was, got your uncle Andrew oh on the phone. Talk God. to him. That's what that sounded like. That was unbelievable. Talk for, to your uncle Andrew for a professional uh, interview. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I, I don't know. It, 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 it I guess some people me, never grow out of that dynamic. <laughs> it's so very Italian, but it's so, uh, like, aggressive from the jump as well. It's Yeah. Th- I mean, but that is Italian. I guess, it's, yeah. It, it, so, it, it's <laughs> yeah. that level that you were talking about a second ago of, like, it's ironic to be ironic to be, like, he's sitting there yeah, going, yeah. he's going to fucking hate this shit, watch it, I'm going to do yeah. it on, I'm going to do it on his show, I'm going to do it on his show. <laughs> and, Holy, did you see, did and, you see what I did to off, my kid brother? When he gets off, he's going to be like, I can't believe he fucking did this to me on my goddamn show, that <laughs> son of a bitch. And then, you know, they're going to be texting each other, hey, how'd you like that? Is it funny? You like us talking about mom on CNN? <laughs> Sleep Science in the chat says, am I the only one who thinks they're doing a bit? That's what I, I don't mean. Think so. I don't think, th- I think that they're just too Italian. Yeah, that's natural. That's yeah, the exactly. hardest thing to tell. So, yeah. like, as a Mediterranean person, I'm Lebanese. We will 100% commit to a bit like this to make other people around us feel awkward. <laughs> and it is, and it is it a works. tried and true thing. Yeah, because you're sitting there going, I can't tell. And that's the point. That's the, that, to me, is the best kind of comedy. So, you're saying it might blur yeah. the line. Yeah, blur that line so that people don't know because that's when things get like fun. At that point, they're like, I don't, you could go this way because that's what I'd expect, but I also know that you know how to play on expectations. Yeah. That's, that's the kind of, I hope this was a bit, but I doubt it was. <laughs> I, I think that you're right. I think that they thought that it would be a bit, but that it was real, but that it comes across as a bit. But that they really think that stuff and that they're performing this in a sense in order to sort of push that out to yeah. people. Yeah. So that people are talking about like, is this a bit or is this? Hey, we're talking like, about that was it. the whole purpose of it. And, and uh, Nico in your chat says it's like that Simpsons episode with Sideshow Bob and his brother 
when they have uh, when they're on air together and they're bickering over which one was mother's favorite yeah. and all this stuff. When yeah. there's a familiarity like that, and across, uh, especially across like something about that satellite delay, that connection from the studio to the remote, yeah. you know, camera, it adds that dynamic. Uh, there's a prank call, or it's not a prank call. There's a, a YouTube video of a reporter in an elevator uh, at an apartment building who the apartment has shut the elevator down and people are being interviewed about having to walk up like eight flights of stairs. And the two men, the guy at the elevator and the guy back in the studio start arguing like that too. Well, I was your boss once and yeah, you are no longer. no longer. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, happen? yeah. I remember that. <laughs> there's like, that's one of the so all time greats. It totally reminds me of that. The satellite lag in between the two uh, just adds this level of it, too, that it makes it awkward yeah. from the jump. It's great. So, I mean, as much as this was fun to watch, we got to punish them. Yeah. Are we just, what do we put them in timeout? Yeah. Yeah, let them, let them, uh, put them in their little playpen, take away their, uh, <laughs> take away their toys. Yeah. <laughs> Give them a binky, take away their yeah. mics. <laughs> Don't, exactly. don't let yeah. them get on air. That's what that's you what my mom's favorites. Are you deplatform them, Brian? Yeah, let, let yeah, them yeah. Not be on air for like two weeks, and that includes Twitter. Come on, come on! I need to be on the air. No, 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 Andrew! No, no, no! You lost your privileges. You're going on there, ruining your brother Chris's show. Ah, uh, you know you can't let that stand. <laughs> we can't let that you stand in the Kumo family. That's disgraceful. You're making him look like an idiot, Afongo. <laughs> oh. Uh, so let's move on. Can we talk about... I, I want to talk about one that's non-quarantine related, but it, I, right. I, I got to bring it up. Is it this it, one? Yes. Yeah. Breath of Fresh Air. I know. I know already. We got... Uh, this, is, this is something else. Uh, there is a couple new Marvel superheroes... And uh, oh god, this they, I could not believe. They this go wasn't I didn't believe it either. No, this is stuff. This is this is a hundred percent real. I actually, actually like I know I kind of know this guy from like being really? at the Onion. Like I mean, he was an Onion writer, but now he is uh, like a Marvel comics writer, and he's been doing like a bunch of shit for them. But he has created... I don't want to... A monstrosity. He has created Uh two new superheroes named uh, Snowflake and Safe Space. (laughs) Not not just that. There's also um, Trailblazer. Yeah. And what's the vampire one? It's like I didn't see that A B positive or something like that. Yeah, no, it's like a like a an AIDS vampire. Wait, this is real. (laughs) Yeah, and they're all like on a team. What? Yeah, yeah. And what happened to good old Spider Man? What so happened wait, to the Teen Titans? Does the so, vampire have AIDS, or does he give people AIDS, or they? I, I think he's looking gender, for it. Excuse me. <laughs> okay, so do they, are um, they not? Uh, are they not allowed to to like feast? Because then they might pass. We're gonna find out. We gotta watch the clip. Yeah, let's watch this clip here. Um, oh, okay, so I O Not Runner in the chat says B negative, uh, and that. That's the bad guy is B negative. Oh, so oh. because it's they're turning around the insults like snowflake and safe right. space. They're 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 taking it back as one would right. say. Right. Exactly, yeah. And B negative, um, he's full of negativity. He's probably replying to their social media accounts with yeah. the derogatory terms. Sounds like some new age Captain Planet. Yeah. So let's dig into it here. Snowflake and Safe Space are the twins, and their names are very similar to screen time. It's this idea that these are terms that get thrown around on the internet that they don't see as uh, uh, not a very uh, daring character design either. Kind of wear them no. as yeah. badges of honor. Safe Space looks like is they're kind gonna of go a swimming or something. Sort of stereotypical jock. He can create force fields, but he can only trigger them if he's protecting somebody else. Trigger. Uh-huh. Snowflake is non-binary <laughs> and goes by they. Mm. Snowflake mm-hmm. has the power to generate individual crystallized snowflake-shaped shurikens. The connotations of the word snowflake. In our <laughs> this guy right sounds now like he's like being so careful and uh, with how he's describing everything. Is, uh, he has it to be into something Definitely. sharp. Snowflake is is the person has the more offensive power and safe space is the person who has the more defensive power. The idea was that uh, they would mirror each other. Why are they holding each other like that? Each other. They're, They're twins. twins. Dagger. Are they so twins? the whole thing about this, I mean, you, you can't please everybody, especially not on Twitter. 
But it goes without saying that some people found this offensive. Everybody found this to be very stupid. Mostly yeah, stupid, yeah. but some people were like legit offended by it. In what sense were they offended that. by it? Like the idea that like this like this like non-binary character is called Snowflake, which is like yeah, sort of like a that makes you know sense, yeah. the the stereotype and it's like he's like, "Oh no, it's like she gets to use Snowflake shurikens and the other guy triggers people with his safe barrier space." And it's just like I just I just I already hate the way that we talk in general. <laughs> yeah. Like, do we have to, like, make characters yeah. out of our... Who's next? Like, the go-off king? <laughs> <laughs> the, the social justice warrior. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, remember that fucking show Bible Man? It's like yeah, Bible yeah. Man for the fucking yeah. internet. I remember <laughs> Bible Man. Holy shit. I mean, like... Christian side hug. Crazy shit. <laughs> the Christian side hug. The, I just um, don't... I, I think, like, uh, the creator would probably get called into question on his background and if he has the voice to be creating characters for, you know. Right. Right. For, for that community. But I feel like this would be a good idea. And let me explain why and how, because all, everything's about the angle. And he seems very sincere in this angle that, like, this oh, is how we this true, is how true. we fight back. And it's just yeah. like, if he were to make some form of, like, if this was satire in sort of way, I feel in some sort of way, I feel like this would be very effective satire because it's so over the top. It's so ham fisted. And if you had these characters that were called this and like the thing that this reminds me of, for whatever reason, is the uh, old car, uh, Comedy Central show drawn together mm, and yeah, how everyone yeah. was like a stereotype and they were all like, you know, like in order to prove some sort of larger point about like how all these people interacted together, I think that this would be like a very good satire of like, this is what people think about this industry. And this is what people think about these ideas. And we're going to use these like ham fisted examples to sort of prove a broader point about like this entire narrative of like what people think, like the, uh, like, the political bent on comics is I think would be like really interesting. I mean, there is they a are chance. not doing that. There's no chance that they're doing that. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I agree. Yeah. I agree with you, Grant. Like, I, I think that's a very good point. They, they, they're trying to make, they're saying, no, these are words of power. These yeah. are words of power. Cause we're going to make them words of power. But he, here's the thing that they're not taking into consideration, or it seems like is that to some people, it doesn't matter how many times you tell them it's a word of power. To them, mm -hmm. it, it may not be. And they're going, this is what this word means now. Well, so now you're telling me that if I do this, I'm this thing. And maybe they, you know, like the, the backlash to that to me immediately is if you ever try to tell me I'm this subgroup, I probably don't want to be it. So mm -hmm. having having like who identifies as a snowflake and who identifies as uh, was the other one? Uh, I mean, as safe space is a, is a good concept. Space, yeah. But, but like, it's like it's puns. It's just wordplay that Marvel gets to now like, <laughs> uh, you know, make money off of. I, I get, I get it. Yeah, like, exactly. I, I remember being younger, and and I, Nico also said this in your guys' Discord. But like, I remember being younger, and um, my friends saw. I think it was Orgasmo, and they started calling me Fruity, which is one of the uh, the character names in that. And I remember, all right, you guys think it's it's going to bother me. I owned it and I, it became my name. You took it back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so it didn't it didn't hurt me and they never thought of it as bad. They couldn't use it as an insult. That is a different way of using that word. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Like like that's taking something and doing something different with it. This is like, hey, here's this thing we all know and now it's a weapon for you, but nobody wants to identify as a snowflake. And nobody nobody likes that like, oh, we need to have a safe space because it reminds them they're being attacked. Like, you right. know what I mean? Hearing these words to some people, negative connotation no matter what. Yeah. Well, it trigger. that's what triggers her, Trigger is, her yeah. snowflake ability. <laughs> like, like, I mean, <laughs> he made sure to use that word too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. For, a, for a specific reason. So that's why I agree with you, Grant. When you, when you say that, it, it, it feels like they're using these trigger words on purpose and like making it so that we hear these little bits so that we're talking about it oh yeah definitely yeah. there's there's like an idea of marketing it as hey this will get clicks and absolutely it, yeah we're here we are talking about it because like yeah. any other new new marvel characters that they announce like those don't make news 
yeah who who cares and but like this people, like you'll people get enough write, people like hate reading it you know like yeah. you'll get a bunch of youtubers that are you know on the right side of the spectrum that'll like buy this stuff just to be like look at what they're doing now and it's just like outside of that frame of reference who the fuck cares but if they can like yeah if they can outrage market to those types of people that are going to hate buy it like yeah, you're going to make some money off of it. Why wouldn't you? Yeah, like the, the it, nuance that we haven't totally mentioned here <clears throat> is it's just weird that, you know, they have, for example, they have a non-binary character that that always has to be a political thing when it isn't inherently political. It's right. just an identity. So it's like yeah. it, it is kind of shitty that anytime you have a character like that in something, it is seen as quote unquote pandering or it's seen as some sort of political move, which yeah. I don't I think I think that this guy is trying to to not do that but i don't know that naming her snowflake was the smartest way to do it right it's too much of a gimmick exactly yeah and and, and that's what i was gonna say uh after you was was that there is a difference in having that be a part of a character's personality having Mm -hmm. them be non-binary but not having non-binary be their only like discerning fact yeah the issue with this is that it's singling out the things that people, again, are sensitive over. It's not celebrating it. What makes somebody a snowflake? Write a comic about what it is that makes somebody feel this way. Take us through a narrative where you explore how somebody becomes a snowflake and how they come out of that, rather than, here, they're a snowflake, and now they got cool magic powers, and they can throw this. It's like, no, well, they still have that problem. You could like, name. You could get the shock value of naming the book Snowflake, and it's about this team of whatever. But yeah. <laughs> naming the character, this is my superhero yeah. name. It Again, seems to be very mishandled. I think one one show that did that very well. Uh, if you guys are caught up on it, is uh, like one of the last few seasons of BoJack Horseman. Uh, they uh, the character of Todd like basically came out as asexual, but it's like. That's not his only defining characteristic, you know, like he's Todd, like he's this weird, like couch jumping, eccentric, like funny character. And then like it sort of snowballed into this, like, well, what's what can we find more out about his life? And then it turns out like he has no sexual urges or anything like that. Like that was a very good way of sort of doing what you're describing is like. Yeah, you can have a character that's a certain gender sexuality, but that shouldn't be the crux of their identity is just that like, oh, I I identify as this and this is the only thing. It's like, well, but what are other things about you? What draws people to you other than the fact that you're this or you're that, you know? And yeah, that, it, just, think- it does seem like forefront, like, oh, just to let you know, this is, the, you know, it, yeah. it, it just like... It's, it's such a complicated issue and it's like, I don't even like feel comfortable fully talking about the logistics of it because it's right. just you know sure we're probably not in a yeah, space to, to exactly. really deep dive on it but yeah also everyone's got an opinion and as a comic fan i just know i like i don't know who that it would be marketed for i guess really a, yeah a younger audience i don't know yeah I, yeah I, I could see that i think it's for and, and that's the other thing Th- then like you just said uh you know we have to take a little bit of time and realize not everything is for us yeah we can't mm-hmm. just yeah. say we want it to be for us even if it is this is clearly not for us mm-hmm. because right. if it was it would hit on a, a hit right away it would it would hook us and it would grab us this is for people probably younger like i would say at least 10 maybe even 15 years younger like like yeah. I'm, I'm talking people in middle school going into high school Right. Are exactly what I was thinking. Just learning about these phrases, not knowing where to go for this type of information. It, the way it's drawn is clearly for a younger, popular audience. Yeah. Not a, and, that, and that's not a negative thing. We oh. understand these things. We understand the nuances. We can have an educated discussion about them. But do mm-hmm. you remember trying to have an educated discussion during an election year when you were in high school? Like... It was just no. It was just nonsense. Yeah. This is yeah. this isn't a Marvel Max line. This is a uh, not. <laughs> this is not for adults. Okay. Yeah, I just I, I will say though, not a fan of the character designs. They're not good. It just looks like wetsuits. Come on. They're yeah, both it's like just yeah. humanoid. That's so fucking boring. It, it looks like Ben Ten or whatever that show was. <laughs> yeah, on. yeah, yeah. Like, that reminds and, me of that. Yeah. And and once I started to like really look at how how the colors and the names and what they were talking about. Like okay, I, I I can I can see where they're going with this. 
this is not for somebody well, yeah. like me. I want I want adult I want adult comic books. Ed Brubaker, like good shit. It's so on the nose. That's mm-hmm. why everyone thought it was like a, a fucking MDE sketch, like that yeah. video. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think that it. Pl- I mean, you know, it, it, it's easy to sit here and say like, oh, well, it should be this, it should be that. Like yeah. maybe, like from my point of view, like I think this would be right. very effective satire. Maybe they take it in a certain angle that we don't really see coming because we haven't read it yet and we only see these character designs and people talking about them and maybe they do something with it that's actually good and proactive but on the surface it is one of those things that just like everyone's immediate reaction is just like why is it so ham-fisted it's too much i would say like over just being proactive like just if it's good yeah like just just make it good yeah you know, Honestly, that's the most effective way. Yeah. It, and and maybe maybe the reason why that we have this response is that we've had a lot of experiences where things are satire and things, you know, we do tend to get sort of jaded about certain subjects because uh-huh. it's just easier to get jaded and not think that it's wholesome. This may genuinely be a wholesome push. And what does wholesome work for? Younger audiences who don't know what to do or are confused mm-hmm. And might need some help. Maybe they've never heard this term before. Maybe they've True. never had to deal with any of these topics. I know I learned a lot erroneously from pop culture as a kid. So why not have this available? You've heard it. Oh, Snowflake, it's a Marvel issue. Oh, let me check it out. And then you learn something from it. Or, you know, I remember comic books having like hotlines at the back. If you had issues mm-hmm. and problems or domestic abuse and things like that. Like there may actually be services outside of Again, what we want out of it. It's like the people complaining right. about, you know, it, it, it's a kids, it's a, it's for kids. It's clearly, I think, for kids and younger audiences or lost audiences. So let's just say here, you know, punishment time. Uh, we should get a superhero. Yeah. Yeah. The thought cop. Yeah. That's like, basically, I mean, that's basically the alter ego is I feel more Officer Grant than I feel myself yeah. most of the time to be completely honest you become like, the character yeah i have become the character yeah i mean when you the characters gun, become me when, i yeah all you just at go, all times when yeah. you just go solo mustache i'm like is this, is this guy doing a bit or yeah exactly yeah you know people at work are just like why do you have that mustache and i'm like i can't like, explain I do a, it i do a podcast like i do huh? say that yeah it's so role. yeah i think that uh we should get a superhero based on a demographic that hasn't been explored yet. Uh, a straight white male podcaster. <laughs> yeah. Oh, perfect. <laughs> yes. I'm down with it. I agree with that. So let's get to one last story here. Uh, do you guys have time for one last one? Yeah. Oh, definitely. <clears throat> so for our last story here, I want to talk about something important, something that's really touched the whole world. Probably the most epic video I've ever seen. What, what was that song from like the 80s? The We Are the World song? Yeah. That's, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. what I was thinking. Yeah. This is like Hell that, yeah. but like much, <laughs> much worse. I'm so excited. So, uh, yeah, this is a bunch of... A bunch of uh, so, you know, we're all quarantined. We're all practicing social distancing. All of our makeup staff has been fired. Right. Yeah, our and, hairdressers sent home. <laughs> this just goes to show you that celebrities are... Just like us, except they don't help us. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, pretty so, much. Let's they're just, not a GameStop employee. Let me tell you that. Yeah, I want to see these these fog, <laughs> these folks work a shift at GameStop tonight at midnight no. with no fucking hand lotion. Uh, so let's hit this video. Imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you oh. try. Is that Tom Petty? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No hell below us. Above us on the sky. I'm gonna go ahead and say I don't know Imagine who half of these people are. I was just gonna say that, yeah. Grant. I, I'm, I'm lost on a lot of these. Oh God! Oh, what happened to Sarah Silverman? I don't know, man. Nothing. We all grew up. <laughs> it isn't hard to do. Jesus. Nothing no. they care. They couldn't have all picked a key to sing this song. They were hiking, Imagine though, guys. All the people. <laughs> I don't know who that is. No idea. No idea. I don't no know idea who this is. Today. Is that Adele? The Billie Eilish? I don't know who that is. Yeah. You may say that I'm a dreamer. No, boomer. You're a boomer. <laughs> I'm not the only one. 
I hope someday you will join us. They couldn't have said key of C. And the <laughs> this all Everybody's like, singing the same key. Did one person decide to do this or was it just like, oh, one person and then Daisy changed? Possession. Daisy changed. I think, I wonder I think if that's can. true. Wait, there was more because like Will Ferrell comes on. Whatever. You get the whole yeah, fucking point. Whatever. Yeah. Okay. I've seen enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've had enough to make you sicker than the fucking virus. Yeah. <laughs> I get Honestly. it. It's nice. It's it's pretty people getting together. That's that's cute. That so, yeah, at first that was my thought too, but it's just like a lot of people are suffering real bad. <laughs> and not to be like gimme gimme, but I just applied for unemployment for the first time in my life. This does Grant, nothing for me. They were singing to you. <laughs> Yeah. Give me yeah. money. How about that? You give me money, Gal Gadot, yeah. and then I'll listen to your fucking song. How about that? This song so, isn't going to help Amazon deliver my copy of Doom Eternal on time. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got the email I'm, today. Delayed. Delayed. I'm sitting here with my dick in my hand, and <laughs> you know what? And it's fucked up. It is like he wants his Doom Eternal. Yeah, and the song isn't going to make me feel any better. No, seriously. Like, I want to hear not fucking look at all these yeah. people. Right. And there's, uh, in addition to this, there's been a lot of videos on Twitter of just celebrities crying. Oh, and yes. the, con- <laughs> the context is that they're just crying. That's the only context. There's no other context. There's not like, oh, because of this or whatever. It's just like a video of Josh Gad openly crying saying, it's okay to cry. And it's then okay. Sam it Smith, is. I guess, was crying. And Sam Smith was like, oh, it's okay to cry. It's like, why? Why, why do you show us? You know, a lot of people actually don't know it's okay to cry. Yeah, but but <laughs> like it, showing it, like showing the tears welled up in your eyes yeah. as this ugly close up of your like snot nose and everything else <laughs> is so unnecessary. And so like, like just again, it's like a uh, humble bragging. Like it is. Guys, I'm fucking crying. I, we're isolated and I'm with you. I'm fucking sad. <laughs> yeah, I remember the last day of middle school when everybody was walking around all mopey because we thought we wouldn't see each other again. But that was 20 years ago. Yeah, we're adults now, yeah. Josh Gad. Is it sad? <laughs> I don't know who that is either. Yeah, I have no idea I, who that is. You're fine. You're I better know, off. If I see his face, I know who he is. But if you were to say, oh, but what's he been in? I have no idea. He played Olaf oh, okay. in Frozen, which I guess that doesn't what tell you what f- he looks like. Yeah, that's... <laughs> That was the worst description of an actor. He was in Pixels. You see Pixels? No! Uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know to tell you, man. Uh, oh, but th- I know who he is. The whole thing, the thing that bothers me is some someone on Twitter pointed this out. So, you know, while we were doing the PPS, we found out on the air that Tom Hanks has the <laughs> coronavirus. True. Uh, that was like the a, update. Sad day. Uh, sad day indeed. <laughs> and... A day or two later, Idris Elba was on Twitter saying he's oh. like, uh, he's like, I have the coronavirus too. Yeah, I wasn't even displaying symptoms. And then it's like, hold up, hold up, hold up. Why did he get tested? And then for the rest of us, you had to leave, like you had to leave the continent right. to be to even test yeah. for it. Right. But the celebrities it, automatically get tested. Yeah. No matter what One the case is. is. And then they're just singing this song to us. It's just like it, it, I, I, I'm not. I'm not like as bitter as some people are about it. Like me, I've seen, you mean? I well, no, I would, I'm not even like that. But not like you. No, I mean like I've seen a lot of people on Twitter who are really, really mad about this. Yeah, and like I do think in some respect, like this is like me playing devil's advocate. Is these people mean well? They're just really, really dumb. They're so out of like, touch. It's. I don't think that it's necessarily like a vindictive thing. I just think they're all really fucking dumb. They don't have to yeah. deal with the same shit. You know, they've never had to file for unemployment like I did it's today. Not even, like it's not even just that. Like they're just yeah. stupid. Like Jimmy Fallon, like walking around <laughs> yeah. with like the guy. Like he looks. He's just like he just like I'm on my walk. I'm walking around. I'm having a walk, and I'm gonna film a viral video. And just like the, they all look comfortable. Uh, they yeah, look there's like, like nothing assistance else. Of, all their assistants have like uh, raided the Costco two weeks ago for them, and they're all <laughs> exactly, just yeah. on vacation in the Hollywood Hills, man. It's like uh, the word optics is a big thing nowadays, but the yeah, optics uh-huh. on it are just—they're too dumb to realize how shitty it looks. Exactly. 
there was uh, one of my favorite videos to come out of this. Um, I can't find it quick enough. And it, like the, the audio isn't good to put in the podcast anyway. But if you go to Jennifer Lopez's Twitter, she tweeted yes! out a video of her son. I watched that. Like on a hoverboard in the background and like someone I, I don't even know who retweeted it and it was like, hey, check your basement because the house looks exactly like the house from the movie Parasite. That was the first thing I thought yeah. of when I saw the thumbnail. I'm like, what the fuck? Which like Damn. obviously speaks so many levels, you know, yeah, it's yeah. like what is well, because it's this- J-Lo and is it A-Rod? A-Rod. Yeah. Yeah. And they're yeah. being served drinks on a silver platter by their fucking hoverboard wheeling son. Crazy. Uh, dude, uh, it's the most bizarro shit. That video makes me It insane. really is, man. I feel so detached from just reality in general. Yeah. Like we were saying earlier, it's just like, yeah, there's no point in satire anymore. It, this, is just the, this is just reality. Yeah. I, like, meanwhile, I'm working from home talking to dying people <laughs> from my job every day. <laughs> Oh fuck! It's crazy man, it's crazy. Oh god, yeah. God help us. Patreon.com/slash/thoughtcops. Help them out. Fuck These it. trying it's, times. It's shameless. I don't care. Yeah. Um, we, well, you know what? Anymore. As the new National Guard, we declared martial law a while <laughs> right. ago. So you could force them, uh, Kevin and Grant, to subscribe to the uh, the Patreon. I want to say right now that yeah, as the National Guard. The Patreon buck should be coming out of people's tax but tax dollars. Yeah, it should. You know, that's where your tax money should go. Yeah, we're doing us. a public service out here. Yeah, as uh, as you know, Officer Grant from the podcast from the hit podcast Thought Cops. Uh, the one thing I have to say about martial law is uh, I haven't played Tekken in years. <laughs> is that a character in Tekken? That's a character. Okay, in Tekken, just yeah. making sure. Nice. I don't think I technically know what martial law means. Does that have something army to do takes with, over oh yeah 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 is it the yeah. national guard or is it the army i think when the army like takes over us yeah oh yeah dude bunch of 18 podcast to the M4s. people yeah, yeah. Uh, so anyway we gotta punish them hmm. Ooh, but this is gonna be juicy <laughs> grant we haven't spun the wheel yet this episode dare we yeah, we can spin the wheel. I was just telling these folks on the uh, PPS that their wheel inspired us. That is true. Because nice. the hardest part, that. yeah, the hardest part of this show is the like Grant the said punishment. At the, at the, like Grant said at the live show with Brianna was the hardest yeah. part of the show is the gimmick of, of the, the entire, entire show. show yeah, uh, <laughs> coming up with the punishments. <laughs> right, and people hate doing it, so we got a wheel for that. It's a bummer. We probably won't get to do a fucking live show for a while. Flip uh, the script. Flip the script. Okay. Um, you know what? I, I know that the wheel says flip the script. I almost feel like the monkey paw punishment would be more applicable to this. I sure, know it's, yeah. it's one away and like the wheel doesn't matter. It's like whose line is it anyway? But the, the monkey, the monkey paw punishment, because they're singing the song imagined by john lennon yeah and the whole thing is like imagine this would happen it's like well yeah uh no more religion <laughs> <laughs> no more God. imagine no more countries yeah no no more oh countries God. yeah <laughs> so that's everyone just saved the world yeah yeah for once <laughs> for once yeah careful well, what you imagine yeah careful what you imagine because you, you might just get it mm-hmm you idiots. They should have changed the lyrics and did a parody at least, like Imagine No Corona. <laughs> right. No Corona. It's, that would have been easy funny. if you try. Yeah, it, it would have given some effort into it, but oh man. And then the punishment would have also solved our whole problem we're sitting in right now. Yeah. There you go. I mean, it's, it's very similar to uh, like back in 2016 when everyone did the Hillary clinton this is my fight song music video (laughs) it has that level of like complete lack of ironic understanding of just like no they think that this is gonna win an election as you singing this is my fight song in in trying times such as these you gotta remain positive that's why you gotta have high 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 hopes for living living. (laughs) i'm gonna kill myself at the end of this episode and that's gonna be your fault (laughs) that's gonna be your oh god (laughs) <laughs> yeah <laughs> and god the la- like the last time i the only time i left the house this whole week besides this was to vote yeah and Good. guess what bernie fucking lost because yeah. people didn't want to get sick yeah oh uh, no maybe I mean, I it's about my grandfather hopes. oh geez yeah Baby probably switch is. there 
They had us go to an elementary school while a pandemic was going on, and there were no wipes and no hand sanitizers to go vote. And you're not allowed paper. within 100 feet of an elementary school. Isn't that right, Kevin? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, they didn't ask. I didn't tell. <laughs> Don't you? Because you have to introduce yourself to everyone, right? I am Kevin. You know, i i got a I got a thought cop sticker. You know, <laughs> maybe they'll check out the pod. Right. Anyway, uh, <laughs> moving right along to our, our key to the city this week. My key to the city goes to a group of youngsters. You wanna, All right. You want to pull up Grant? A group of youngsters because children in the future. Wanna, oh, this one up here. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I believe the children's are so the you know I wanted to bring this up be- and I've been waiting to bring this up I've been so excited to do the show with the- again this week because you know we always talk here about the uh, the Minecraft punishment you know whatever happens in Minecraft stays in Minecraft any threat you say is okay in by Minecraft. law if you say in Minecraft I want I want to I want to I want to tear your heart out and take a shit on it in Minecraft I want to I want to yeah. punch a hole in your fucking skull in Minecraft I want to kill Jeffrey Epstein in Minecraft Exactly yeah. However it could be used for positivity because like I said in these in these trying times we are segmented off from each other but we remain alone together So school is pretty much indefinitely canceled at least for the rest of the school year yeah. Dude, kids got to be. Lo- I can't imagine being a kid during all this. It would be so exciting. I know. I'm sure there's scared like, kids, but there's got to be more excited kids that are home from school with all these. Oh, fucking it's jerks. like a snow Free day time. for the rest of the year. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so these kids in Japan made a graduation ceremony in Minecraft. Oh, so it didn't really happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, check it out here. They got they they made all the teachers and all the kids and they walk on stage and get their little diplomas made of blocks. That's adorable. That's really cool. I just like uh just as like a bit of history, I like that the video game Second Life was developed like for this very reason is that the <laughs> the guy that made Second Life read the book um what the fuck is the book I have it it's a uh, Snow Crash by Neil Stevenson read the book Snow Crash and was like like this is the future is everyone's going to have like an online avatar and everyone's going to go around and there's going to be a whole second like digital world and everyone's yeah. going to utilize that in the future and then instead of that it's like Nobody gives a shit about Second Life. Nobody uses it. Nobody understands it. Everyone's using Minecraft to do their graduation ceremonies is yeah. hilarious to me. And I was going to say, even, too. Oh, go ahead, Garrett. Go ahead. Oh, it's like we don't even need to make it look good. It's just going to be like Lego block <laughs> graphics. <laughs> yeah. That's as, well, that's as much as we need. <laughs> yeah. It's also like VR chat. Like I had a secondary key to the city this week. Um, Porter Robinson, musician. He yeah. had like somebody made him a uh, VR chat avatar mm-hmm. and he got to meet the creator of the VR chat because everybody's like segmented in quarantine now. So people are hanging out in VR chat and they got to have this like inspiring conversation talking about just going and met for what makes you happy in life. And uh, it's interesting. Honestly, I, this might just be the way of the future. That, I, we, I hope we gotta so. Get yeah. on, we got to yeah. get on this. Yeah. I mean, haven't um, you guys watched Serial Experiments Lane? That, that we anime, actually, basically. that's a great, uh, great segue. Yeah, that might um, be our next <laughs> Fire Bros episode. Yeah, our spinoff uh, oh. podcast, Fire Bros, uh, patreon.com slash thought cops for just $2 a month. We're going to be reviewing Serial Experiments Lane as Hell well as, yeah. as, well as the uh, Donald Trump episode, episode of Family Guy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I hear that is just hot trash. You we, need to watch. I can't wait. To watch I can't it. wait. We we took uh, Grant, Nico, and I. We've and, seen and it sleep, twice now. And Sleep Science. We took edibles and stayed in and watched <laughs> the fa- the Family Guy episode where he fights Donald Trump for ten minutes. It's amazing. Un fucking believable. Wait, fights him like he fights the chicken mascot yeah, exactly. for ten yeah. minutes. Yeah. yeah. Is there but dialogue it's so much during more. this? Oh my god. Yeah. Oh, it's it's, it's so. I mean, you want to talk about like uh, things that should have been satire that were just like ham-fistedly fucking uh, like serious. Like this is one of those things. You would think wow. that they were making jokes about it, but it was a hundred percent in earnest. I mean, like. People look at the, the the book Finnegan's Wake and they're just like, 
what what information can we derive from this fucking gobbledygook? This is that, but like the TV show version. There's so many references to the past four years worth of politics. It's it's nauseating. It, you could never you could spend a lifetime uh, fucking analyzing the entire episode and still not come up with the conclusion. It's like that lasagna cat video with the Garfield comic strip. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's my, that's my key to the city. Uh, Garrett, you, you, you were telling me off mic, you had one as well. Oh yeah, definitely. So I, uh, would like to give my key to the city this week to the wrestlers and other sports, uh, performers out there doing shit with no audience, just flying by, uh, the seat of their pants, no cheering uh, in the crowd no uh you know shouting your name why right. why do you think the athletes go to the uh, game in the first place it's not to show up for work it's that adoration they get from the fans and uh people still showing up i guess the sports is kind of out now but not the greatest sport out there the world wrestling entertainment <laughs> wwe is still out there uh i keep seeing Thank clips God. I keep seeing video of these wrestling spots where there's no audience. And there was a Stone Cold one I saw the other day. Is that right, Brian? Was that we, new? We got that. We got oh, that yeah. all loaded up if you want yeah, to uh, watch, watch that. that, that yeah. yeah. The, my key to the city goes to these guys out here just big stunting and uh, performing with no audiences. Proving that the show must go on. And it makes it funny on a whole nother fucking level. Like, uh, I'm, I'm loving that, this. And, and that's what's great about it. What 316 Day is all about. Give me a hell yeah. <laughs> and they, they cut to an empty audience. They know I what said, they're doing. It's great. If you want to know what 316 Day is all about, give me a hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> oh, this dude's kayfabe and to the what? fucking king. What? <laughs> <laughs> him, him saying what at the end. That, I mean, that, and that's actually, a reference to a Stone Cold thing. It's like, a total, yeah. It, they yeah. know you know, yeah. and now they're playing off of it. We have to do the mm-hmm. best we can. It's exactly. theater in the round. It's live improv. It's show. We ha- The show must go on, and it I does. mean, like, a friend of mine recently was telling me, like, he was talking to his 88-year-old grandfather about everything happening, and even he was like, I have never seen anything like this in my entire life. Like, no I one haven't. alive has seen a pandemic on this scale. No, not the across only, the whole world. Like it, right, right, yeah, right. yeah. The only thing I would compare it to is, because uh, I know I've I've heard Noam Chomsky talk about it a lot because I'm a fucking nerd, is uh, Noam Chomsky grew up like in the Depression era, mm-hmm. and that's when yeah. like you saw the stock market crash and like you had the dust bowls and shit like that. That's the only thing that's comparable. And like, again, even back then, you had this like sort of hope of like, well, we got to move past this. Like, you got to get a job. You got to go out there. Like everybody right now is just like, we just got to sit around and wait for it to stop. Like there was the hope of like moving forward. Now it's just like, let's see what happens. Hey, real quick. Yeah. I, do, I do have one addendum on this WWE uh, yeah. a second link there because I, I, I was enjoying this on Twitter as this well. One? Yeah. If yeah. you want to put that in the chat, this yeah. is uh somebody somebody was like you know what pairs perfectly with a wwe without an audience is the soundtrack of twin peaks by uh what is that guy's name uh badalamente angelo badalamente right right so it's it's the twin Peaks soundtrack over an audience less wwe so it rules let's hit this here Laura's theme. This is great. Little world, and they turned it into a majestic fun house. (laughs) 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 The fiend. He put me back together. This reminds me of every scene with Bobby in it. Yeah. Yeah. John Cena is the arm. The slaughter. <laughs> this is the blue room, not the red room. <laughs> Too that's good. Great. Oh, yeah. good. That's yeah. great. Yeah, that's so good. Brian, you uh, Brian did you have this. a key to the city? Is something positive, yeah. something cool? I did have a key to the city. Um, mine is uh, Twitch communities and Discord. 
the online yeah. communities are really coming together right now and and supporting each other and really doing a big job. I know for me, I, I stream with with my roommate. Uh, we call ourselves the Big Dogs on Twitch.tv yes. slash Frank Howley. Um, and Great channel. Our, our community has been so supportive, so cool. Our Discord is awesome. Everybody's there. We're all in this same fucking pit together. We don't know what to do. We can't do anything. We can't do anything to make it better other than do nothing. So we're hanging out. It's a it's an excuse to come back and be like it was when we were all 12, coming over to our friends' houses, doing virtual LAN parties, creating those opportunities to hang out and just chill. You're you're isolated, but we're more connected than ever. We have our phones. Yeah, totally. We have the ability to talk to each other yeah. at any time of the day. Like more than anything, the, my key to the city goes to online communities because they can really, really help people, and they have been. If you have nowhere to go, you can come to the Thought Cops, hang out in their in their Discord, and chill. Right? Exactly. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, no, like the Thought Cops Discord has been like one of the coolest things of like recent years of my life. I, yeah. I, I truly, yeah. truly. Uh, I mean, I, I appreciate everybody who listens to the show, and I mean, mm. like, this is like my passion. I mean, I, yeah. I love doing this. And yeah. the fact that, like, anybody cares about this and yeah. the fact that, you know, like, in the face of adversity and danger and everything happening right now, I'm, like, more inspired to fucking bring people laughter. Because, I mean, like, yeah. moreover... It's Now's like, the time to do it, you know? I like doing this because sure. I want to make people, like, a little happy, I guess. Yeah. Like, I know it's, like, sardonic and whatever, but it's, like... It's because, like, a lot of times, people like, derive pleasure from it. Well, like, a lot of yeah. times, shit just doesn't make any fucking sense. And like, let's yeah. just have a laugh at it, because like, you can't get through life without a laugh. Yeah, or live, or laugh, talk love. about it. Just, just talk through it with other people. Like, we took a lot of Discord calls uh, last night when we did the PPS, and it was yeah. like mm-hmm. getting the perspective of people not only all over the U.S. but from other countries. We talked to people in Japan and what it was like for them there two weeks ago versus now Mm -hmm. it's a weird thing to imagine going through something like this 10 years ago when we weren't all interconnected uh you know you had to have like or 20 years ago before we even had you know like internet in all our fucking bedrooms is it did they happen to say it was getting better it is getting better like it's turning off in in certain places like china and whatever okay um but but again these are places that have put in to force like pandemic curfews way earlier like, than we yeah did here. pandemic response units and all these things like the shitty thing is we're at this point now i think in america where there's nothing else we can do but write it out because we took too long to respond um, i mean grant like th- look out the window right now i have never fucking seen yeah this. it's like, never been this dead there is like street lights are off there's no cars i like whenever we're like we're like if you listen to the show you're hearing constant fucking sirens yeah there's and not been one yeah. siren and like and Zero cars, nothing. The last time I remember it being anything like this was nine eleven. Yeah, yeah. I, mm-hmm. I was like sixteen or seventeen in uh, in two thousand one, mm-hmm. and that that's how it was. It, nobody was on the streets, nobody was out right. driving. Everybody was at home watching their TVs, and people were freaked out that like is more to come. So that's another yeah. reason why people were staying in. It was like, oh, yeah. I remember yeah. they evacuated a lot of people's <clears throat> jobs just because. People were freaked out about working in a tall building in yeah. any city. So it, it does have that vibe. Driving around at night has been uh, particularly eerie. It has. It's but sad. as a goth, I'm weird, quite man. enjoying my playlist. <laughs> when I drive the, la- the last time I remember it being like this, I brought this up on our PPS last night. Um, for California, I remember when we have fires, it's a lot like this. Like yeah. When yeah, they're serious, yeah. like serious fires, that's the only other time um, that you are basically mandated to stay inside. And and it's only for like a day or maybe two, and it hasn't happened in a long time. But like, it's just strange. There's nobody out. Every Everywhere it's quiet. It feels like it's Sunday every single day of the week. Yeah. It's yeah. so, yeah. so weird. It's the Lord's Day. But again, <laughs> we all have to be inside. We all have to do what our part is, which is nothing. Stay away from public areas if you don't need to be in public areas. Yeah. Be more hygienic and enjoy the time that you have. Enjoy this time to relax. When was the last time that you, I, I, I know I keep saying this, but when was the last time you got this opportunity to kind of not have to worry about what you do next? Because yeah. 
It's not our fault. We're Grant's not losing working. his mind, though. You know, like in California, they've already said, like, hey, until April, um, mortgage and uh, yeah. rent can't be the reason to evict somebody. Oh, that's good. I think they like, did the same thing in Illinois, too. I, I'm, I'm kind of wondering, uh, to be honest, if I'm supposed to pay my rent this month or not. I think that yeah. Pritzker put you, like a rent freeze on everyone's stuff. I, I, I have to double check know. that, but okay. I'm pretty sure that rent, utilities, mortgages, all that stuff have some sort of freeze on them so you don't have to pay them. And like to speak of that, too, it's like I've... I've been enjoying bonding with my two roommates. Yeah. You know, it's been totally. kind of, it's been cool. We've been like, just, we're all working from home and uh, we're all just kind of like, what the fuck is happening? Yeah. And just hanging out and being like, well, here we are, you know? Yeah. And I'm and, hearing that from families too, who are at yeah. home with all the kids. Uh, you know, a lot of good can come of this. You just got to look on the bright side. All right. Sleep sign says you will still have to pay your rent later. Well, yeah, I mean, there, that it's seems a freeze. Right. It's not a cancellation. But, Bummer. I mean, nonetheless, yeah. No, Yeah, I mean, this is... You talked about it earlier. The, the thing about this that is scary is that if we paid any attention in school, this has a lot, a lot, a lot of similarities to 100 years ago. Mm-hmm. And yeah. that is the part of it that is... The most concerning, I think, to me. The depression you're talking about? Great Depression? Yeah. Yeah. Great Depression, where we were, uh, like, socioeconomically, sociopolitically, like, in all of these different, like, things, that's where I'm like, okay, this pandemic is one thing because we want to make sure it doesn't go further than it already has and and stem that, but, like, the byproduct is what's really, really scary because normally it's one country, two countries, maybe uh, a couple of groups in, in, like, you know, close close border countries that are small, like micro countries. This is the whole world, and I and it's not uh, and like countries are all closed down f- for this thing. It's fucking bizarre. Yeah, is there anywhere where it's like, no, nah, we're all good in Antarctica? <laughs> like, yeah, maybe I Antarctica. Don't know. Probably I, sections of li- li- probably sections of like the Amazon, where you have those tribes that have had no outside contact, like the ever. Yanomame. Yeah. I, yeah. I hear, I heard the situation in Africa is fine for now okay. africa is like most of africa is already disease ridden from like aids and meningitis and shit like that so they're probably worrying about that like they got immunities pre-built in they're like this corona ain't shit <laughs> yeah this this continent seen it before baby yeah cradle of motherfucking civilization uh grant what's your key to the city yeah uh, my key to the city uh, i'm gonna drop this in the voicemail channel also a lot of clips this uh this episode but it's you know good what? that's fine this is a great video <laughs> i i've watched this like 20 times i've watched today. this hundreds of times um it you need the the visual element to it but i i enjoy it so much that we might as well watch it. Yeah. This is if you go to Whitmer Thomas, uh, his Twitter account. It's twitter.com slash Whitmer Thomas or at Whitmer Thomas W H I T M E R T H O M A S. Uh, he made this like fucking weird surrealist video where he he put uh, like a uh, a baby <laughs> fucking filter on Instagram or something. <laughs> what? And he wrote an entire song about being a big baby. <laughs> I, I believe he's from the uh, Chicago scene as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> that- I am a big, big baby. Although I look like a guy. You oh are my God. And I'm about to this is so good. The AR for like face recognition is getting so good that it makes yeah. like shitty, you know, low quality social media videos look real. Like that's fucking yeah, crazy. He does look like a big baby. <laughs> Holy fuck! <laughs> the Lost Boys poster in the background. <laughs> He looks like a tough ass baby. Yeah. In a big suit. It's like David Byrne. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a big, big baby. <laughs> and you are not alone. <laughs> I'm a big, big baby. <laughs> <laughs> Who shot this He's video? <laughs> He's. <laughs> oh. It's so, <laughs> it's so oh. well done. <laughs> I've seen this hundreds of times, so like good. in the past two days. So good. So yeah, key to the city, Whitmer Thomas. Oh yeah, brilliant. I could agree to that key to the city. Mm-hmm. And uh, 
Thought Cops Word of the Week. We've said it a million times on this episode. And we'll say it a million more times for the weeks to come. Social distancing. Yeah. Means I uh, stay the fuck away from me. <laughs> that's that's finally that goes an out, excuse. That goes out to the guy I was telling you about at the train station. Who right. Was, like I said, wandering around. I'm so sick. I don't know what to do. I'm so sick. It's like stumbling around. I'm like, you know what? Maybe I just won't take the train for 18 months. Yeah. Well, and then I get a sick you, Uber driver. Or I when walk you start like walking, you with a pair of shorts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wear some shorts. Get a bike. <laughs> Apparently, you'll be immune. Yes. I mean, you know, it's the weather's getting nicer here in Chicago. It is, yeah. I mean, that, that's what I'm kind of worried about, though. It's like it's been kind of gloomy and crappy here this week, but it's going to start to get really nice soon, and people yeah. are going to get very stir crazy. And even in California, like the weather you guys have been having has been gloomy and cold and rainy. But when that stops, like people are going to be yeah, wanting to go know. out. You know, I think you can still go out. You just have to practice social distancing. Yeah. yeah. Right. It is officially the first day of spring, which means that it is going to get warmer and reports oh, are yeah. this this virus dies in heat. Oh, so yeah. hopefully that helps to curb some of the spread of this. But yeah, social distancing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, boys that Trump did say would go away in the spring. I don't know if I... Time will tell, I guess. Well, he did a tweet that was just... Social distancing in all caps, which yeah, made man. me feel good, comfortable. I don't know. Whatever. Who Something. Cares? Just yelling into the void. Yeah. Speaking of uh, the void, not really speaking up, but we have a voicemail number. You can leave a voicemail for us and we'll play your message on the show. Give us a call. You're bored. You got nothing to do. You're lonely, I imagine. And guess what? We're here for you. 312-788-7361. Hey, don't want to leave a phone message. Don't want to leave your number. Don't want to do caller ID block? I get it. Send us an audio file. Email us. Thoughtcopspodcast at gmail.com. Send us a nice, crisp audio file. We'd love to hear from you. I love a delicious, crisp audio file. Yeah. Mmm. Mm. Uh, did you know that influenza is actually worse? <laughs> <laughs> thanks, I l- thanks for the call in, Neil deGrasse Tyson. I love that take. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was a good take. I like that take. I love science. <laughs> I fucking love science. Yeah. Yeah, people are always like bringing up like all oh, the flu is like, yeah, but like this is something new. What the fuck is it? Yeah, we don't even have a vaccine for this. At least every year they come up with a flu vaccine. Yeah. We got nothing. We need more people with autism. Just kidding. I don't believe in that theory. <laughs> Jenny McCarthy told me that. Yeah. 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 I'm, bl- I'm going to blame her for that one. All right, let's hit the next voicemail here. Uh, it's uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson left a second one. Oh, perfect. Oh. Yo, y'all better not be canceling this show. Oh, don't worry. But we're just going to have to get America together and throw a fucking stimulus package right up your fucking bungholes. Now get to work, boys. <laughs> yeah. Got to crack gang, gang. down. <laughs> 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 oh, what the hell Damn. happened? I think he couldn't he hang, hang up. up. But we appreciate the support. No. And we we, we will grass. not be stopping. If anything, we're going to go harder than ever. Absolutely. There's nothing else to do right now. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Twice the output. Yeah. This is twice as long as the normal episode. So. Yeah, let's <laughs> yeah. do this shit. Hey, Thought Cops, I net runner here. And this week, my two minutes of hate are all these losers complaining about not getting paid sick leave or whatever because they have to work (laughs) retail or oh at a restaurant or whatever personal trainer it's like if they spent as much time learning a skill as they do complaining about wanting to get paid to stay home maybe they'd have a nicer job that meant they could get paid to stay home like i do oh it's so great being me you guys <laughs> Thanks for doing the show. Bye-bye. What the hell? a little tongue-in-cheek save at the end from identifying him as a complete monster yeah he's Thank enjoying you. his coronacation yeah live it up still getting paid paid leap wow lucky i think he's he's working from home yeah Work, it workers work you know if your bedroom's an office that's my situation now. I can't sleep at night because my bedroom's in office now. No. I think I'm at work. Hey, Thought Cops. I don't know if you guys get this really fun phenomenon on Facebook or if it's just me, but do you ever just get people that you 
like, went to high school or middle school with, you didn't talk, you were never friends, never friends, or if you were, you weren't very close friends, but then you'll get, like, a fucking message out of the blue with some sob story about how they need money, because no. blah, 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 and this is the only time they message you, is because they have, they just need some money. I recognize this is probably a drug thing, but it's really obnoxious <laughs> oh when you say you're the only person I can come to. You've never talked to me, like, as a friend, to say you want drugs and I'll give you five dollars. Like, just be honest is all I gotta say. Uh, Grant, you were saying was terrible. <laughs> you were saying you never had that happen to you. This has never happened to me. me this has happened never. to you. No, absolutely never no. in my life. <laughs> and I think it's a sign of of getting off of Facebook because that's yeah. That was the last ties to like high school. Uh, you know, I had was was people that would DM you on Facebook Messenger. Right. Once I cut that cord, it's like, oh, I'm free. Oh yeah, yeah I cut the cord personally. Went in and deleted all, anybody and any any page that i didn't like know personally or have a physical like like one-on-one meetup with at some point because it, boy did facebook become gross and i only keep it because yeah. of work some jobs like you'd have a facebook because if you're managing sure. their page or uploading things to them it's better to just have a facebook so everything else is private it's only for people who can follow but then i have that so that i nico, can do work nico needs to curate her facebook get out yeah Need purge, to organize yeah. that shit. Need to purge it, yeah. She left a second voicemail. Oh, okay. I swear to fucking God, Kevin, if you got me Corona Chan on your little oh trip to California and Disney, I'm going to kick your ass. I swear to God, man. You better not get me the Corona Chan. Even that Trump bucks won't save your ass. <laughs> Don't forget, we're, we're, we're quarantined together, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, She's going to make your life a living hell, man. I done, don't, I don't think I have it. I planned the trip well before any of this hit the U.S. And what is with you people? Yeah, I said it. You people. What is with <laughs> you people and blaming each other, blaming other people for you getting sick? True. I'm Great. blaming. I'm blaming your choice of pants. Mm, yeah, my pants. My lack. My pants or lack thereof have gotten you sick, right? I think so. Sometimes they have. Yeah, despite the fact like, I that I don't get sick. I feel like See, no, no, you no, no, need no. to build your immune system. Is what needs to happen. Yes. All of you people need to wear shorts and build your immune system. I I have. I feel like half of last year you were coming in here with like tissues and a nope. humidifier. Nope. <laughs> the humidi- humidifier has been put away for a year. It's right back there. It's right behind the piano. Well, I was sick once last year. That once. is not true. Once. That is once. Not true. Once. There's verifiable <laughs> truth. If you <laughs> go back, go back to the tapes. Go back, listen to old episodes. I was how, sick how once. How long were you sick for? I answered this already. We talked about this like two weeks ago. I was sick for three weeks. That's a long time. Yeah, Just making I sure your story doesn't change. Go ahead, cross reference it. Nico, I hope you're happy. Yeah, I hope you're happy. Look what God you're doing, damn it. Us. Son of a bitch. I would worry about Nico bringing that into the house. Yeah. She's sick all the time. Yeah, she's that's, that's true. All the time. That's true. I'm, I'm going to go she with the from, age old law, dude. Whoever smelt it, dealt it. Yes. All right. So yeah. And remember when she came it, back from Cuba? Yeah. And she had like a cough for two months. Yeah. Coronavirus. Yeah. yeah. Uh. Don't they have like rampant case, cases of Corona in Cuba right now? Ooh, she got the Corona Cuba. Yeah, probably. and that was, she's was back probably in, patient zero. <laughs> <laughs> probably, yeah. She got this whole city infected. She you said she had tell. food poison. Uh, mm. I don't know if I believe that. Uh, uh, food poisoning in his cough that lasted for two months. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Now we're arguing in the chat. Let's uh, let's move on to the next voicemail. Hey, Sod Cops. Hey. He's drunk. Um, yeah. Well, totally. I don't know you if expect? you can guess this, but since Sober I've been staying home wrong. for one week already, except for going to the gym. Right. Um... What I've been doing is just getting fucked up, (laughs) even if it's just a weekday. Couldn't tell. Right. I mean, even my university postponed semester, the next semester for like a month. Right. So I have nothing to do except play video games. Yeah. Watch movies. Mm -hmm. Watch TV shows. Get high as hell. (laughs) That just sounds so wrong. Drink. 
alcohol. Uh huh. Um, yeah. You can expect a lot of more of these. It's just like <laughs> 2 a.m. in the morning. Oh, yeah. Which, which it is not right now, but I'm just saying. Future reference. Um, I'm not making any sense right now. You are. But what are you going to do? Uh, nothing, apparently. Um, wait, what, what was I you're saying? You're going to stock up on um, weed and alcohol. Yes, yes, I remember. <laughs> I'm really starting to resent yes. porn people. <laughs> what, wait, what do you say? Because porn I realize how bad it yeah. is and how much damage it does to your psyche. Oh, God, he's a no fat your <laughs> state of mind, uh-huh. your behavior, and everything. Has this guy seen Dr. Uh, Dr. Strangelove? Really? I but, hope so. You know, Our vital bodily content, fluids. It's just so good. <laughs> you know, you, you can't help it but to bust a nut. It's good. You, you know gotta get I'm that saying? poison out. I mean, <laughs> You know what's got to happen? You got to get to fapping. The f- things that feel best are the things that make you feel the guiltiest afterwards. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> is he... This, this, this is only for Catholics. That's thing about life. The best things make you feel the most guilty. You got to learn how to be happy with yourself, buddy. I don't know. <laughs> you you got to yeah. learn to love the things you like and not do them in excess. True. Yeah. Obviously. Obviously. <laughs> Yosef, I love you, buddy. Yosef's bummed because he's... A, it, it is fucked up, I just, Yosef. I just listened... listened. God damn, I can't speak. <laughs> I just listened he's in isolation. He can't go visit that cool girl he met. The Fire Bros right. episode with Witten. Yes. Right. Good episode. Shout out Fire Bros. Oh boy. Even just that woman talking is putting some ideas in my head. Oh, no. I was going to say it was a wholesome call. Oh, fuck. I'm already, I'm already at three minutes. I know you like to keep them short. <laughs> I prefer to keep things short as well. I'm speaking about time, right. not uh, Shut length. up. All right. Uh, oh, my God. Peace out. <laughs> Thank you, Yosef. Horny on main. Dude. I, 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 yeah, seriously. I'm glad that our fucking Patreon bonus episode got you horny. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Apparently. Hey, that's that's the best advertisement we ever got. Jesus. It True. really is. You I, guys I, are I, doing I, your part. At what cost, I guess. But Yeah. At what cost, indeed? I mean, she did say uh, I won't repeat it, but never, if you follow, <laughs> if you follow if you follow Witten on Twitter, you already know. So anyway, uh, let's hit the next voicemail. So I heard you guys arguing about what the goat is, and I don't even know why people even talk about it because we all know that the great Malenko shut the fuck up is the true goat. Shut the fuck up! I don't even know what he's talking about. He I tries don't to Brian. Yeah, Brian, you must know. Can you inform? I mean, the, you guys don't know who the Great Malenko is? I the do. The Great Malenko is one of the six Joker cards <laughs> of the Dark Carnival. Uh, when the sixth Joker card falls, the world was supposed to end. Now, what we didn't know is that the Dark Carnival ended in terms of the negativity in the world. Ah. And now the positivity is upon us of ICP. Shouts out to the Insane Clown Posse. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, I Shouts blame them. I blame them for this shit. I wouldn't. They, They're the nicest people you've ever met. No, I'm blaming them because they dropped the last Joker card and we got a fucking global pandemic. End of the world. Oh, It's been like 20 years since the wrath was dropped. <laughs> <laughs> they, they wrote a whole new gimmick since then. Is that, is that when Osadom bombed the, the towers in New York? More or less, been. It yeah. lines up. Osadom did it. Bush did 7-Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, but yeah, so the great Malenko is, I guess, the greatest of all time. He's uh, he, he'll take you to the halls of illusions. He'll uh, he'll show you things that you didn't want to see. You really do know so much about this. It's oh man, amazing. yeah, yeah, dude. There is a lot it's, of lore. I, I became obsessed with this in college because I had a juggalo friend who like yeah. told me about all the Joker cards. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's fucking like, amazing. Riddle they wrote it out. I'm so glad that I know none of it. I can't tell you how glad I am. You can, you got some time. Learn I about this shit, man. I don't want to learn about it. I will learn about dude. literally anything else. Come All on, right. man. Start, start, off, start off episode one of Dragon Ball with Japanese uh, voice actors and uh, do it with the subtitles. Do that instead of the Great Malenko and learning about it. I've already done that. I've, I've seen Dragon Ball. Damn it. Well, then this is our dear friend. anime he hasn't seen, yeah. This is our dear friend Zwick. You know, let's pay tribute to his culture. Absolutely not. Let's move on to the next voicemail. Speaking of, <laughs> speaking of his culture, 
Speaking of Zwix culture. Hello. Hello. This is Heather. John John's mom. Hey. Hi. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my trip to Nashville. So, um, most of it was fucking fabulous. The last Hell day yeah. we were there, that we were there, sorry, um, they shut, they shut most of everything down. We were not allowed to dance. We could go and listen uh, to the band and sit on our chair. It's like so footloose. We chair what the shit? And dance and got yelled at a little bit. But then I busted the security guard. He was fucking dancing. I pulled the chair over and I'm like, sit your ass down, mister. And he did and he laughed. And then we got him to dance on a chair. I have video if you want it. And <laughs> <laughs> Yo, John, John. Um, oh shit! There's our so boy, John, actually, John. It was actually not horrible at all. It was funny. I made the best of it. It was great, except for they wouldn't let us dance. And you don't know John, John's mom. I like to dance. I like to drink. I like to have some fun. And they were trying to bring me down. Unbelievable. But then the next day, trying to harsher buzz. We went home, and we tried to eat in Kentucky. Kentucky, all of Kentucky was shut down, so we could not eat until we got to Missouri at 7 o'clock. So we ate and we drank and we had one more day of vacation. So that really wasn't a big complaint because I had fun anyways. But anyways, have a super, super day. I hope you enjoyed my message. Thank you, oh, Heather. Thank you, Heather. Yeah. I enjoyed really it. Thank you very that. much. That was great. That was that was a really good call. We have one more uh, addendum here from her. Yeah. Hmm. Do you have a little wanna... something more to say? Yeah. yeah, we're ready. Garrett, I forgot to tell you. I miss <laughs> talking to you. It was awesome. <laughs> talking to you oh, live Heather. is way better than a voice message. I can do way better. We'll talk. Oh, 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 oh my God. Boy. Oh, wow. Oh, you kept calling her ma- ma'am. I know. I'm blushing right now, Zwick. <laughs> uh <laughs> I don't. I don't know what to think. I did. Uh, she is right, though. Calling and talking in person, it does add another level. Uh, you know that the voicemail just doesn't have. So uh, I'll be. I'll be waiting for that uh, call, Heather. Yeah, yeah I mean the call. PPS. You guys do it every single week. I'd say that's a great yeah. chance. You got a new fan. It sounds like. Yeah. Yeah, I, John. John, get, get your mom to call us every <laughs> Wednesday, seven p.m. Pacific time on the Mega Sixty Four's right. Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Mega Sixty Four Podcast. Yes, we can't wait to hear from you. And that's a great segue here because uh, before we wrap up the show, I wanted to give you guys a chance to plug all of your stuff personally or with Mega Sixty Four. Sure. Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Garrett Hunter. That's G A R R E T T H U N T E R. Uh, Instagram is at Garrett Hunter sixty four. Brian, what do you got? Uh, I got my same handle on everything. It's King Lord Brian. That's Brian B R Y A N, and King and Lord are both spelled exactly the same. K I N G L O R D B R Y A N. On Twitter, on Instagram, and on Twitch. You can find uh, when we're going to be streaming. Brian will be doing Big Dog stuff. And I got uh, PPS every Wednesday at 7. And uh, yeah, Mega64 for all your other needs. We're going to be isolated and podcasting this Sunday. Just uh, trying to keep up with everything in, in this oh, new Oh, you guys frontier. are doing a remote podcast? Yeah, we, we did some testing today with Brian over here, and uh, he's going to run the show from the Crow's Nest, and we're all going to remotely dial in. We got a, we got a quarantine cool. cast in effect. So yeah, we're going to be doing a, a different different style of podcast. I don't know if this will be out by it'll, the time. Yeah, it'll, you probably you see this, but if you're hearing out. this now, go back and check that out. Yeah, and I mean, like I think I've said before, the Mega64 podcast is the podcast that got me into podcasts. So with the time you might have off from work or the free time you have sitting at home alone, Mega64 has been putting out tons of great content for a long, long Decades. time. Decades. Yeah, so fucking get in there. and Yeah, what are you doing? Yeah, check it out. Get it's crazy. It. We, we just had a milestone. Our... Frieza saga in five minutes from the uh, Dragon Ball, uh, you know, recreation mm-hmm. uh, series, the Sweeted videos we've been doing. Yeah, yeah. That just that surpassed all our other biggest uh, like million view videos as, really? as being now number one. That that Frieza saga in five minutes is now our number one viewed video. It's a great uh, fucking movie. Uh, how video. many views does it have? I you know I don't know off the top of my head, but it, it's up there. I mean, it, it toppled our like Assassin's Creed and our. Mm-hmm. Uh, our other previous uh, high 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 numbered videos was it Resident Evil Four? Right maybe now. 
That was up there as yeah. well? Yeah, Resident Evil 4 sketch and Tetris. and Tetris were up there. And then Assassin's Creed had the number one slot for a long fucking time. But now the Frieza Saga video in five minutes just came in at... 7.3 million views. Yeah, that's fucking nice. awesome. Yeah. And, so. I mean, I won't go into detail, obviously, but you guys have another great fucking video coming out in the works. And getting yeah. to see the behind the scenes of that, I personally am very excited for that. So, cool. yeah, subscribe to Mega64 because there is some very good stuff in the pipeline. And I know you guys will keep us company in these trying times as uh, Grant and I will be doing the same for anyone listening. So, yeah. we got to. We got to keep you guys entertained. We're here to help out the best we can. It's martial law and we're in charge. Exactly. So, uh, with that being said, if you feel like supporting us here at Thought Cops, you can do so. Uh, you know, as much as a couple bucks a month over at patreon.com slash thought cops. It helps pay the rent because once again, for the seventh time this episode, I am currently unemployed. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> rough there, out here, guys. Man. I know shit's shit's difficult for a lot of people. I get it. So, I mean, if you got if you can, great. We appreciate it. Um, and if you can't, you owe us a voicemail. That's for your mom's credit card. Yeah, or, yeah. or mom's credit card. Uh, but if you can't get that, if you can't get that, leave us a voicemail three uh, three one two seven eight eight seventy three sixty one, or send us an audio file at thoughtcopspodcast at gmail dot com. And as Io Netrunner puts in the chat, if you donate ten dollars, you get a private episode. That is true, and uh, we've said before on the show, people have been weaponizing us because it's a private episode. You can use the file for whatever you want. Yeah, somebody will send a picture of their uh, friend. Blackmail us. We don't yeah. care. We don't I don't care. Wow. Wow. Send us a picture of your friend. Uh, we'll roast him for 10 minutes on mic, and then you can send it to your friend and be like, hey, these two uh, strange <laughs> men uh, saw your picture and uh, talk about how you look funny or talk <laughs> yeah, about yeah. What, they, what, they, what, uh, what they think you're like. Yeah. Uh, it's not, you know, we're not mean, but we are... Truthful. Honest. We're truth- Honest. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. uh, well, you know, what, sure whatever could. the hell you want to do. I mean, this is yeah. the time to... We're looking to do more fucking content so and for five dollars you can be in the live chat and you can react as we do these episodes yeah we'll read what you say you know when it's pertinent to what we're talking about and to those of you who already donate thank you so much it means a lot Keeping seriously the ship afloat. yeah i mean like i mean like money is a not the best metric for success by any means but the fact that we make anything from this yeah and the fact that anyone cares to give us a dollar a month, Any two dollars a month. Yeah. That's awesome. Like, yeah. thank you so much. So, like I said, we're not stopping the ship. We'll be back next week. We got, uh, we've already got the next one or two episodes planned with some interesting, exciting guests I think you all might be familiar with. So stay tuned. Yep. Uh, Garrett, Brian, thanks so much for coming on the show. Yeah, appreciate um, it. Coming into the thank studio you for having us. us. Yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah. Thanks again, man. I always enjoy listening to the show and I always have a good time coming on. So, Thank you for having both of us this time. It's kind of cool Absolutely, doing a double. Yeah, yeah, this yeah, was great. a fun, episode. fun experience, yeah. guys. I don't think we've done a double remote guest before. I don't think so. Yeah, and this has been a good, like a very. I think this went. We really did a well. triple yeah. remote guest one time. The oh, Rose that's Mortem right. Guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was something else. That was chaotic, um, that but tricky. this was this was yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. It's good because Brian and I are quarantined together, so we can just sit in this tiny yeah. little room. Exactly. Breathe each other's air. Yeah, recycle our uh, oxygen and just talk into the same mic. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody, stay safe out there. Uh, cozy up. Consume some good content. Have a laugh because you deserve it. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening. We sure do love you. We'll see you next time. Good night. Good night.